Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai hare mai uh, ki te hui o Pūroro Rangaranga, the Social Cultural and Economic Committee, i tēnei rā. Um, tēnā whakamuhi o mai ki au ki tētahi ko tuhu tuhu uh, mana pōre rā nei, mena kawehi koe i te hui. So if you need to leave the hui, please let myself or Alyssi know. Uh, so we do have um, a number of public participant, participants this morning, so we're going to go through till 11 o'clock for morning tea. Um, hopefully... Uh, we managed to keep to time because we have um, Kura is available to join us um, at 11.20 and we want to make sure we keep to that time. So if we do go over, we might have to cut morning tea a little bit short and then have a break again after the item is finished. Um, so thank you everybody in advance for your patience and your total call. Uh, so I move the motion. I'm going to move on to apolo oh, apologies, actually. I need them first. Um, so are there any from the room? We've got some uh, from... I think Councillor Calvert said she's apologising for lateness because she's having trouble getting onto the internet. She is trying. Um, is there anyone else? I think Councillor Foon has an apology for lateness as well. She's not far away. Are there any others? I think otherwise we've got people online. We've got the Mayor, Councillor Young and Councillor O'Neill online. So that's... We don't need to put in Councillor Foon's one because she's here. Um, so I move the motion that the Pūroro Rangaranga uh, Committee accepts the apolo those apologies. Um, Ma wai e totoko. Do I have a seconder? Um, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Free. Um, so now put that to the vote. Have you voted? Oh, she's voting. <laughs> I think they're waiting for you to press the button. <laughs> ah, cool, mana. So that's carried. Um, I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest um, in relation to any items on the agenda. I can't see that there will be any, so we'll move, keep moving forward. Uh, so confirmation of minutes. Um, I move the motion that Pūroro Rangaranga Social Cultural Economic Committee approve the minutes of the committee meeting held on the 7th of April 2022. Having been circulated, they be taken as read and confirmed as an accurate record of the, that meeting. Ma wai o Do I have a seconder? Kia ora, Councillor Paul. So now put that to the vote. Just waiting on a vote from Councillor Young. Councillor Young, I think she's, I can see. Councillor Young, are you waiting for that? And Mayor Foster says he's he's just in the car. He is a he is voting in favour of that. <laughs> ah, cool, mana. So that's carried. Yeah. All right. So there are um, no items not on the agenda, and uh, just need to make a quick announcement. Um, so just advising the um, committee that the. Um, Chief Executive has made the decision to withdraw item 2.2 Kandala Pool project timeline from the agenda today. Um, so further work needs to be done to assess timelines and community engagement for this project. So that will come probably a bit later this year. So we're going to move straight into public participation. And I'd like to begin by welcoming um, Richard Noble. So nai mai hare mai Richard, if you'd like to come and join us up here. And Richard's going to speak to us on the Armenian flag trespass at um, Anzac Day service at Atatürk Memorial. And so Richard, you've got five minutes. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if there'll be time for questions within that, but if there is, there may be some for you to be more killed. Te tumanaki o te hui, uh, a jil dei koe. In 1915, alongside reports on the First World War, the big news story in Wellington papers was the horrors being afflicted by the Ottoman Empire on its ethnic Armenian citizens. For example, from the Evening Post on 8th November of that year, 
The Turkish outrages in Armenia are without parallel in history. Never has there been so resolute an attempt to exterminate a whole race. And the public interest in this led to public outrage, which in turn led to action, which continued for some years after the end of World War I. And here in Aotearoa, relief committees sprang up to raise funds and material aid for the Armenians, including in Porneke, Wellington, in July 1922, with the mayor as chairman. Sadly, the intervening decades have seen in Aotearoa the development of an almost historical amnesia towards the Armenian genocide, replaced by the myth of a special bond with our former Anzac foe, Turkey. My grandfather, Lloyd Noble, was wounded at Gallipoli. Since the matter of the Armenian genocide came to my attention some years ago, I have sought to honour my grandfather's Anzac legacy by working for the formal recognition of the Armenian genocide by the New Zealand government. I have done so with the blessing of leaders of the Armenian community in New Zealand and from an internationally recognised genocide scholar, Thomas Schmutz of Switzerland. And to this end, in recent years, I have been present at the Anzac Day service at the Atatürk Memorial, displaying an Armenian flag in silent witness to the victims of the genocide. I have always done so respectfully and peacefully, with good relations with police who have affirmed my right to express my opinion in this way. However, this year at the Atatürk Memorial, before the Anzac Day ceremony began, a police officer informed me that I was not welcome to display an Armenian flag as I had in previous years because of the great offence taken by Turkish officials. Freedom of speech notwithstanding, the officer explained that as the Atatürk Memorial was council land, police had been authorised to trespass anyone, but in reality, in reality specifically me, displaying the Armenian flag. The officer further explained that council had taken this decision at the request of MFAT, who in turn were acting on a request from the Turkish embassy. Atatürk Memorial may be council land, but it is a public space, I would suggest, and the Anzac ceremony is a public event. It was a shameful and expedient move by council to circumvent my freedom of expression guaranteed under section 14 of the Bill of Rights in order to protect the sensibilities of an authoritarian and repressive regime. Furthermore, by kowtowing to the offence taken by the Turkish embassy at any reference to the Armenian genocide, council is in turn validating both the genocide denial of the Turkish government and the ongoing intergenerational trauma of the worldwide Armenian community. As mentioned, in 1922, the mayor of Wellington headed up a relief committee for the survivors of the Armenian genocide. Fast forward 100 years, and in 2022, Council has been complicit in denial of that same genocide. And for the record, here is the offending article. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you very much, um, Richard. There is time for a partai if there are any from councillors. Is there any? Our councillor phone. Um, kia ora, Richard. Thank you for visiting us. Um, so, can you just describe in the past you you haven't had any reason or, or any you haven't been asked to leave or you haven't been no no refused the attendance. Lovely little chats with the police who have and in fact the first year in 2017 the police officer came up and shook me by the hand and said thank you so much for being so respectful and we affirm your right to do what you're doing. Mm. And so what was your experience of the difference this, this time? Well, uh, the, the officer told me, so I didn't actually stay, the officer told me, Richard, no flag this year because council have authorised to trespass basically you if you display your Armenian flag at the request of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade at the request of the Turkish government. And at... Um uh, in oh, just having a moment, uh, Pukiahu, you were there as well. That was, was that, that was fine. That was fine. Okay, so it was just at Atatürk. At Atatürk, yeah. Okay. But I went up to the public road and stood there with my flag, and they couldn't trespass me from there. But it's a 
It's a bit shameful. This isn't Russia. Thank you. Kia ora. Thank you, Richard. Kia ora, Richard. Thank you for taking the time to come and call it with us. Um, now I'd like to um, welcome Patrick Morgan on behalf of Cycle Wellington, who's going to speak to us on item 2.3, the Matairangi track proposal. No my haru mai, Patrick. Uh, so you've got 10 minutes, um, and if you leave a bit of time for questions, that'd be great. Okay. Kia ora. Good morning, kia ora koutou. Uh, Patrick Morgan representing the cycling community in Wellington. We have around 2,500 supporters and followers. Every time people ask Wellingtonians what they want about their city, they say a thriving community, good connections, great connections to nature, to the green belt and the blue belt. And you know, I suggest to you the proposal, the generous proposal from Trails Wellington to build a, tra a new trail in Matarangi is a great fit with that. Um, I think it also signifies something I love about Wellington. You've got this combination of um, a public asset, public land, and private money and community labour. It comes together to give us something that makes Wellington really amazing. So I think it's a really generous gift from, from Trails Wellington. And I don't know about you, but when my partner cooks me a meal, I say, thank you very much. And if I want to add a bit of salt to make it to my taste, I'll do that. Um, I think the, the proposal has been well thought through, and I um, acknowledge the work that council staff have done to address concerns from submitters. Um, and I've, I've read the paper, it's very detailed. So, yeah, in short, we support the proposal for several reasons. It's a good fit with um, council values and plans to lower emissions, to be you know, a thriving capital city, to promote good connections with nature. There's huge support from public submissions, uh, I think we can expect overall environmental and social benefits. And I see Trails Wellington have a kind of a slogan, trails, trees and traps. So it allows actually better access to this part of Mount Victoria to improve the biodiversity there. Um, it's far from a pristine uh, old growth forest. Uh, anyone who's been up there will see that. And I think this provides good access to improve biodiversity and control the pests. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to allow lots of time for questions, but if there's none, I'm happy to give the time to others. Thank you. Um, kia ora, Patrick. Um, I do have a, a part for you. Um, sometimes uh, in, during the um, submissions, we hear a bit about, um, you know, cyclists um, making um, people walking on tracks feel a bit unsafe just with their, um, the way that they do things. Are you able to speak to that and what you've seen in the cycling community around um, you know, sort of encouraging um, etiquette to um, help our walkers feel safe? Yeah. I mean, firstly, there's no way that Cycling Wellington or Trails Wellington condones reckless riding. And in fact, the track has several design features designed to mitigate that. Um, the days are gone when, when cowboys built, built tracks all over the place. Uh, we've kind of come in from the cold and working closely with City Council over the years. And I think you'll see the evidence of that at Makara Peak and Waimapihi, also in the region of Rangatuhi and Wainui Amata, that there's um, a core community of responsible people who want to add an asset to our city. It's really bad news for us when there are these conflicts. So we do our best through uh, programs like Word that you've heard about, clubs like Revolve, and the Wellington Mountain Bike um, Club to set a good example and to encourage people to adhere to the, the mountain bike code, which is signposted throughout our riding areas. Um, in saying that, there's always a few that can spoil it. Um, unfortunately, we lack the, the ability to control everyone's behaviour. It's something we all live with in the city. Um, yeah, I think, I think the council's got a lot to, to gain from working with uh, responsible clubs and trail builders to get a really good outcome here. Uh, mountain biking is, is booming in popularity and for many people it's a reason why they choose to live in Wellington. It's, um, I really can't think of another capital city ha that has such great access to trails a short distance from, um, from where many people live and work. I think it's an amazing asset for the city and I think um, the council would be on strong ground to, to accept this gift. Uh, kia ora. we've got a part eye from Councillor Phone. Kia ora, Patrick. Um, I, I'm excited about the prospects of mountain biking and the, you know, what we're creating together in Wellington. Mm. 
But would you say that there's a place in the inner city for a more, uh, you know, around the mountain bike, Matairangi particularly, for a more shared culture and space with more extreme mountain biking on, you know, external city? So, so a slightly different culture or, or style of mountain biking? In, in a city area? Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think yeah. the style of this track, I believe it's, it's called a grade three track. So it's for intermediate skilled riders. It provides a transition for, um, in fact, for many of our young people who have benefited from bikes in schools and in programs like Word, who are looking to progress. Uh, it's too big a step to go from, you know, beginner tracks to, to ones that um, require more skills. So this is the way to transition people's skills um, towards trails that are appropriate for them. I note also, this is on the, the east face of Mount Victoria. It's an area that's currently, um, I guess, not as popular as the west face of Matarangi. Um, and I think, again, through the design features of the trail and the way that um, trail crossings are handled, I think you'll find that, um, yeah, the potential conflicts are minimised there. In saying that, it's, you know, one, another word for conflict is sharing. and. Uh, if you go to the waterfront, when, I, when people go to the waterfront, right, there's a lot of people who want to use that space. It's a public asset. Now, um, if people use it inappropriately, it looks like conflict. But shared spaces are also what make cities great. So mixing up people from uh, you know, different walks of life, if I can say that, um, it actually is one of the things that, that makes a city great. Um, again, it's the design features of the trail, the education through uh, the clubs, that sets the expectation of what the appropriate behaviour is. Kia ora, I'm Kura Patai from Councillor Pennant. Yeah. Um, thanks for your presentation. So just two questions. Um, do you think the city needs another mountain bike park? I'm not quite sure what's going on at Parirua, whether they're making any progress, but just given we've got one in the west, do we need one somewhere else? Um, or to Kopaho as well, as, as Councillor Wolf reminded me. And the other question is, I guess is there an understanding that for some people a fast-moving bike coming at them is a little bit unsettling? And just like a driver coming faster to cyclist on a road is also unsettling. Thank sure, you. yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Councillor. Um, do we need more places for people to, to exercise, to get in touch with nature? Absolutely. And I think the style of this proposed track is it addresses a gap in the network um, in the eastern suburbs and central city that people can access easily without driving to Rangatuhi or Wainuiamata or other popular areas. Um, again, mountain biking is increasing in popularity, and I think um, you know your staff are doing really well to to meet that public demand. In terms of the feeling of having someone coming at you fast, um, I absolutely know that feeling, and I note this path is well. First of all, it doesn't exist at the moment, so it's not actually displacing current users. It's uh, it's an addition to Wellington's trail network, um, and again through the design features and the education. I think you'll find that, um, that the potential conflicts are, are mitigated there. Um, yeah, does that answer your question, Councillor? Yeah, it, is it perfect? No, but I'm not sure there's anything we do that, that's perfect, but I, I don't think that's a good reason not to, to say yes to this generous proposal. Can I just ask one more question? Um, look, it is incredibly generous, and um, I'm sure we're all grateful for it, um, but not all groups are as have the same level of resources. So do you have any thinking, like, so for the walkers or whatever, is there any way that we can make that more equitable? Uh, Wellington has a pretty good network of, of footpaths and trails throughout the city, uh, which, you know, the city council has provided. This is a case where um, the biking community has come together to raise money for a trail, which we think will be an asset for Wellington. Um, I think it, it addresses the, the fact that the cycling community is still underserved in Wellington. Um, it's going to change in the next five to ten years, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. In terms of uh, you know walking advocates raising money to build a trail, it's it's there is some history in that. I think um, the clinical track on on uh, Arrow Valley 
was funded through the Wellington Mar Marathon Clinic. So there is also a tradition of different trail users um, raising money and, and creating assets for the city. Oh, kia ora. Thank you very much, Patrick. That's um, all the pātai, and thank you for taking the time to come and call it all with us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, now we're going to move on to um, the public participation for um, item 2.1, Tupa Kia ora Māori strategy. Um, and so the next seven um, public participants will be speaking on that. And um, we'll begin with um, Karen Fifield on behalf of Wellington Zoo. No my heart and my Karen. Good to see you here today. Um, so you're familiar with how this works, 10 minutes, and there might be some pātai in that time. So over to you, kia ora. Kia ora. Ko Karen Fifield, toko ingoa, no Wellington Zoo aho, tēnā koutou kato. It gives me great honour, actually, to be able to speak um, to the new Māori strategy to piki ora. Um, I think this is a very important strategy for the city, and I really congratulate Karepa and his team and Barbara um, and the councillors for the leadership in this space. And I think that as the capital city, it's very important that we show leadership. And I think having this sort of strategy to bring all of this together for us as a city really le leads us towards being a bicultural city in the truest sense of the word. Um, it's been absolutely amazing for us at Wellington Zoo to work with Karepa's team, and they really are a force of nature. And I think that they should be congratulated on their absolute determination to complete this mahi. And what's going to be wonderful to see is how the actions behind this become reality within our city. Um, it's been interesting for me um, thinking about what we've been doing at Wellington Zoo and we've been working with Taranaki Whanui for many years now with the wonderful Nevin Broughton. And we've done a lot of work in terms of um, naming protocols and things like that. But the last couple of years we've been working really in depth. So we've done a lot of like, you know, sort of symbolic work, but now it's really deep and meaningful work to truly become a bicultural organisation. And with Kanohi Kitia, we've actually been working with Nevin on doing that. For us, we have a lot of people who are not New Zealand born um, in Wellington Zoo. And what it's been lovely for them is to actually be able to embrace tikanga Māori, to understand what that means for us as New Zealanders. And the other amazing thing that's been incredible through Kanohi Kitia is that people of Māori birth have reclaimed it. And it's been quite an incredible emotional experience for those people. And having Karepa's team to actually support them through that process has been incredibly emotional for me as the chief executive. And I would like to say, and I don't want to speak on behalf of the CCOs, but I do want to acknowledge our experienced Wellington colleagues who are here today. But the CCOs have been very, very committed to working on our Māori work and to be able to say that we are all bicultural organisations. And we're all on a journey and we're all learning about how to do that properly, but we've been incredibly supported by Karepa's team and I really want to congratulate them again because it's been, it's been quite an emotional journey for us as a group of CCOs. I would like to acknowledge Amy Hughes, who's in the room with me. She's been leading the work on Kanohi Kisha at Wellington Zoo. And, you know, Nevin is a very busy man, so he's a bit like the Scarlet Pimpernel sometimes. But actually, he's so committed to the work with us, and I really want to thank him and Amy for really working on this mahi. Last Friday, I was at Pipitea Marae um, mm. for the signing of Takai Hede, and it was quite emotional. And when Barbara asked us to go and sign the document, um, I was quite shocked. I thought, OK, I'm going to do this. And it was, um, it was something that I think we've been working towards as a city. Probably not soon enough, but it's done. So I do want to congratulate Jill Day particularly in terms of her passion for this mahi um, around the council table. And I think those two documents, the, what, the strategy we're talking about today in Takahede, actually bring those two po together to really create something that's really meaningful for us as a city. So I just want to say congratulations to everyone involved and now the mahi really begins. So kia ora koutou um, and thank you everybody for being the forces of nature that you are and we will be there supporting you every step of the way. Thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora. So I feel like we want to give you a paki paki. Very committed.
this, I must because I remember when I moved here and I used to think to myself, as the capital city zoo, what what are we doing? It was it was actually non-existent. And as the capital city zoo, it was something, and Amy knows this, it's very close to my heart, that we show leadership as the capital city zoo about being bicultural and really embracing Tikanga Māori. So, and Fleur will know this from being on our board as well, how important it is to me, particularly as the chief executive, so yeah. Mm, we've got lots to learn from you all too and all the people, all the public participants here today. Like, you know, we're, we're here to learn and hear from you and we're really encouraged by what you're doing. Are there any parts I feel like you've covered it really well, so I don't think there will be. But thank you so much because yeah, we really appreciate you coming to share with us and what this means with you as a zoo and as very part important. of your journey. So it's very important, so thank you very much. Ka pai. Uh, now I'd like to welcome um, Nick Crane on behalf of the Accessibility Advisory Group. So no my haru my Nick, it's good to see you here today. You know how this works as well. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to hearing from you, kia ora. I have to put these on, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, it's lovely to be here anyway. Um, kia ora koutou, call Nick Rowena Ho. Um, I'm here as the co-chair of the AAG. Um, I'm just here to support uh, to Piki Water. Um, AAG had a very wonderful engagement with um, the council officers to uh, discuss to Piki Water and what it means for Tangata Whaikaha Māori in Wellington. Um, and that was a very um, different engagement for AAG. It was a very warm engagement, a very um, long engagement for us. Uh, we, we certainly went over time, but we went, we were um, welcoming of that engagement. Um, this strategy will um, benefit many tangata whaikaha Māori that live in Wellington. Um, there are 50,000 disabled people that live in, in Wellington, many of whom identify as tangata whaikaha Māori. So this strategy will be very important for them to deliver the services and the engagement with council, that's that, that, that they certainly need, and, and we certainly endorse that as as AAG. So, um, just like to thank the the council team led by Karipa um, for bringing this to council, and also obviously uh, Councillor Day for driving this work. Uh, it's very important. Um, so, as as a group, we we're certainly on board and supportive of the work. Um, so. Uh, my remarks are, are very limited today, but they're certainly supportive of, of the work and we're looking forward to continuing engagement with this work. And um, yeah, that's all I have to add to this today. Kia ora, so kia ora. it's a very significant addition. We really appreciate you taking the time to come and share that. Are there any partai? Councillor Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora, Nick. Lovely to see you. And I, I you know, uh, my experience of that session was exactly the same. And I was so impressed with um, the the sort of knowledge and understanding that that um, Johnny and his team already brought to those issues. And I, I guess I just want you to maybe think about what the sort of intersectionality conversation that was happening. That there was sort of so much that people felt were kind of common issues and concerns. Yeah, I mean. Intersectionality is an is a is an area within the disability community that's coming to the fore more and more. So I think in terms of intersectionality between tangata whaikaha and and um, and disabled people is certainly something that we're going to have to think about as a council, um, because when we design our services and, and deliver our services, we're going to have to think about it with a with a tereo lens, with a with a disability lens. Um, so that will be something that hopefully this strategy will enable us to do. Um, because ultimately, if it's good for Māori, it's good for, for everybody. So I think hopefully this strategy will enable us to, to be able to do that with a little bit more coherence and, and um, deliver services that are ultimately better for everybody. Kia ora, ngā mahi mai o hākia koe, Nick. Thank you very much for coming to um, Kōrero with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Kia ora. Thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay.
Um, so now we're going to move on to the screen and we've got um, Jackson um, Lacey online um, on behalf of Youth Council. I think we've also got Anastasia, I think I saw in the back. <laughs> Kia ora. <laughs> um, so no, my my um, Jackson, thank you for um, coming to court it all with us. You know very much how this works, so I'll hand the, the rako over to you and um, yeah, go from there. Kia ora. Ma tēnā koe, Jill, e te kaiwhakahaere a te komiti nei. Um, tēnei te mihi ki ngā pau e whā a te kaupapa nei. Ko te ate awa, ko Taranaki Whānu ki te upoko e tika ki te rūnanga o Ngāti Tuarangatira me te kaunehero hoki um, o Poneke. Um, Kā nui te mihi ki a matāho aru nui, um, te rōpū, um, te rōpū whakatau um, a tēnei a tēnei kaupapa. Um, ana, ana tino mahi, tino mahi maioha, hei, hei whakanuia, hei whakatū, hei whakamana. Um, ngai Māori katoa me ngā, ngā mea Māori, ngā ahurai Māori, ngā, ngā Māori tanga katoa, um, kei tō tātou taone. Um, he atāhua, he, he, he whai mai oha um, te mahi a te manaho, mataho aru nui um, ki te rinanga tai ohi o te kaunihira. Um, kua mahi rātau uh, kia mātau, um, me mātau. Um, hei, hei, hei tuhi um, a mātau whakaaro i roto i ngā kepa a, a i roto i ngā um, I, I, te, I te tīnana me te wairua hoki a te, a te pānui nei um, nō reira kānui te mihi um, kia rātou um, I'm, I'm just so excited by this you know I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been on youth council for longer than frankly I'd like to admit um, and it's refreshing it is refreshing to see um, this work finally popping above the surface, as 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 many around that, or as many around the table will know, um, the work of 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 supporting Māori tanga and and supporting um, Fano Māori and Rangatahi Māori is so often done in private, is so often done below the surface, and so is so often done by individuals hustling to try and achieve for whānau and rangatahi. And I am so excited that this strategy is going to put that stuff in black and white. It's going to say, this, this, is, this, is the, this is the challenge that we have set forth that we will be held accountable to. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited that that this is happening and I'm excited that it is being done in a renewed spirit of partnership with uh, between mana whenua and council. Um, I'm incredibly excited by the potential that Takai Here has, oh, oh, both what it has already achieved in bringing the parties together, um, but also the potential that it has for the future um, to, to change the way that we think about implementing Te tiriti o Waitangi in, in this city. Um, I am incredibly excited by that. So, ka nui te mihi ki a koutou katoa, ngā mani whenua, ngā, uh, ngā apiha, te kaunehera, um, koutou katoa hoki. Um, a tēnā te mutinga o tu o ata ama, a, a ku whakaaro, um, engari mena he pātai a koutou pātou mai kia. Uh, kia ora, kia ora ihoa. Um, are there any parts I for Jackson? Uh, Councillor Matthews. Kia ora, Jackson, and thank you so yeah. much for that corridor. It's beautiful. Um, I guess I've got a question about, you know, sometimes sometimes the pushback we get about working, you know, more um, in a bicultural way and, and respecting... <laughs> you don't have to tell me about that one, but... <laughs> it comes from older people, and I guess I'm just interested in that perspective, you know, how is that different that, that you see um, with younger people and through Youth Council, you know, that people who have, you know, are maybe growing up 
with a with a with a different ethos and how they see this work as somewhat differently than you know say my parents' generation, some of whom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I th- I think I think the best way that I can talk about this is I was I was talking to someone who was deciding whether or not to learn to do Maori. Um, and the, they they ultimately decided to, and and their reason to was. Te reo may not be the language of the Aotearoa of today, but it is the language of the Aotearoa of tomorrow. Um, even from a demographic perspective, um, overwhelmingly young people are strongly in favour of honouring te tiriti. Thinking back to what um, what Matuamwana said, te, uh, treaties are not to be settled, they are to be honoured. And rangatahi Māori and Pākehā Tauiwi, are overwhelmingly in favour of, um, of, of of this kaupapa. So, yeah, bat on, basically. Um, we're behind you. Kia ora, thank you. Rauwe, we've got a pātai from um, Councillor Paul. Kia ora, good to see you. Um, it's Tam. Um, hey, um, Kia ora, Tam. I- Kia ora. Um, hey, I was just wondering, it's, um, I really enjoyed your call at all, so just as a precursor, um, it really resonated with me because I, I, I might be wrong, but you are a second language learner of, of Te Reo yeah. Māori and, and obviously yeah. you're, you're Māori as well. So I just, um, it was really awesome to hear your call at all and to see your growth within Te Reo Māori and, um, and your confidence growing as well. And I, and I just wanted to ask, um, as a rangatahi living in the city, how have you found your journey and do you think there are enough opportunities for rangatahi Māori to reclaim their reo? And if not, do you have any suggestions for how we can um, improve that? Um, it's, it's been amazing having rangatahi Māori on council and seeing that we can do that. We can do that and seeing Māori excellence Everywhere I go in this space is just incredible. So, kānui te mihi I think it would have been much harder if I'd been anywhere else, basically, to be a rangatahi Māori, learning te reo Māori, because there aren't many cities that that have embraced te reo in officialdom as much as Wellington has and, and I mihi to Te Tauihu and I mihi to Jill for her mahi on that one. Um, I think I mean me kaupapa here te reo Māori. It should be something that you can't get away with not knowing. You can't get away with not using. Um, and that's where we need to move. That's the direction you know that that things need to move in if we are really to to strengthen te reo and make it a, a working language. And I know, I know that having it be a working language is a big part of te tauihu, and that's really a part of why I really like that strategy. Um, I think council is on the right track at the moment. Um, I think obviously there is still more to go, but I think I also think that. Um, I would find it particularly interesting, um, a dialectical perspective on things, not in terms of political dialectics, not time for Marxist study 101, um, but more in terms of like reo a iwi, um, in terms of um, embracing the dialect and the mita of, 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 of mana whenua here um, and using takaihere as a way of building that partnership. I think I think Wellington has a very good basis in Te Reo Māori, but it is now time for us to kind of go to the next step and kind of move into the space of Te Reo Rangatira. Oh, I could just keep listening to this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other part I? 
I think, um, Jackson, you've um, certainly shared some really important whakaaro with us, and thank you to you and Anastasia for being here with us today to um, bring your tautoko um, from Youth Council. We appreciate the mahi that you do, and um, yeah, this is this is for you guys. This is for our rangatahi, so kia ora. Tēnā koe. Um, well, now I'd like to welcome um, Mikaere Paki on behalf of Te Puna Whakaora. No mai, hare mai, Mikaere. So, um, Mikaere, you've got 10 minutes and I'm um, looking forward to hearing your kōrero. Kia ora. Mei te tatu ngā whakaaro ki ngā huatanga o te inengaro, mei te ngā wari ake te ahunga ki ngā ia nei, a kua tū nei te tūranga ki rongai ngā pakahiwi o te ao kohatu. If I'm confident with where we'll be in the future and composed of where we are at present, it's merely because we're standing on the shoulders of the past. And in that stance, I want to acknowledge Taranaki Whānui, Te Atiawa, Ngāti Toa Rangatira, as well as Raukawa Te Au ki te tonga. I've been someone that has been fortunate to be nurtured by these three iwi as I was raised here in this region. Um, so in saying that, I want to introduce myself first and foremost as a person and then also introduce myself as a professional. Uh, so on my father's side, I'm Ngā Tiapa, Ngā Wairiki, Tūwharetua and Irish. <laughs> on my mother's side, I'm Ngā Tipuro, Ngā Itahu, Tūmanta Kōkiri, uh, Ngā Tiraukawa Te Au ki Te Tonga, uh, Ngāti Kauwhata, as well as Welsh. And today, uh, I greet you with all of this whakapapa as someone that belongs to all of these different iwi, uh, but has been raised and nurtured among the iwi uh, that we get to be part of uh, in this region. Uh, nō reira ka mihi a rawatia, a ngā iwi kāinga, uh, ka mihi a hoki koutou. I want to also mihi yourselves as you have chosen to be in this space right now, in your position, as kaitiaki uh, for the spinwa, as kaitiaki and partners uh, with iwi. Um, as a person, um, I'm someone that is absolutely committed to the normalization of te reo and tikanga, uh, and I want to applaud you for uh, giving us a pōwhiri to be able to contribute and give koha um, to the vision that is going to be presented today. Um, I, I lead a movement that started off with a handful of people wanting to do te reo Māori breakfasts uh, almost three years ago in the week of Matariki. Uh, that started up with a handful of us, oh yeah, let's just get together at Farewaka and have breakfast and we'll practice our reo with each other. That turned into a movement. Uh, but I want to acknowledge te tāruarua, Mark Bradley, um, you know, who in his own right has done a lot of efforts in feeding te reo Māori, regardless of his whakapapa being of England descent. Uh, he's come and contributed uh, quite a lot uh, as a koha for the kaupapa. Um, so that movement has grown into te reo Māori breakfast, where we've uh, been able to deliver, mm, have relationships with many of the cafes around the region. Um, and then we had te pāpara te tango o te reo, where in the evenings, no, at the end of a week, you know, we might be able to get together, have a few drinks, and have some karaoke. And some of the challenges might be to get up and sing your song in te reo Māori on the spot, <laughs> developing your confidence. Um, but then we started to realise that, hey, we're eating too much at te whāne, we better start <laughs> thinking about our hauora. Um, so we developed uh, Te Hi Koi Tanga o Te Reo, um, where we would go with the support of local iwi, um, go and learn about and walk through the ngahere, climbing to the peaks of different mountains, ranges, um, and getting some of the historical corridor as we walk through the bush. And as we get to the top, you now we start talking about some of the collaborations between council, iwi, and business. And in fact, a lot of those hikoi have people represented in those spaces so that they can talk about those experiences. Um, 
So that's the hikoi tanga o te reo. We've also got wakaama. We've got many other examples of events. Basically, in that time, uh, with the support of Te Mātāwe, uh, we've been able to do over 200 events um, within Te Atiawa, within Raukawa, and within Ngāti Tuara, Ngāti Ra. Um, getting our people, regardless of whakapapa, to understand and connect with the whenua. So that's our kai kōrero movement. Uh, there's about 2,500 people uh, that participate in that. And basically, it's about uh, no longer being a hoha and start being a koha. Um, and these people come from all different whakapapa, as I mentioned. Right? We've got tangata whenua and tangata tiriti. Um, and that wide range of tangata tiriti coming together with this kaupapa. Basically, the bottom line is we want to be good tūpuna from our mokopuna. Uh, as a professional, uh, I get to, I'm within the Ministry of Justice, uh, and I'm a kaitiaki of the Māori strategy for the Ministry of Justice. Uh, I also work as te puna whakaora, working with NZDF, New Zealand Defence Force, uh, as well as WorkSafe and being able to have an impact with the mentorship of the Māori chiefs of those spaces uh, to be able to implement and bring some of this Māori, bring some of this energy into that space as well. Um, so I'm, I'm quite fortunate um, to have the mentorship of Te Hau Kāinga uh, and, and being able to support some of the efforts that our, our kaumātua uh, have been trying to put in in government. Uh, in saying that, uh, I mentioned the porphyry. Um, you know, we're aware of you know, what happens in the porphyry with the wero, you have the challenge, you have the karanga, you have the core, you have the fai korero, you have the, the korero that goes down about articulating the way forth, uh, and you have your hongi, which is our ability to appreciate the, rel the relationship with each other, but as well as understand that when we breathe in, we're taking from the world, and as we breathe out, we're contributing to the world. And we all love to have the kai at the end of a porphyry. Uh, what I want to do is touch on uh, the porphyry, but we're going to do a bit of a moonwalk. So if we look at our porphyry, our kai, né, and we see that as our kawa, our vision, our portal. Yeah? And then when we have our hongi, we need to have in place a lot of the tikanga, or action points in place to bring out, to bring about this kawa, this vision. Yeah? And this is something that has been done in the development of tupikiora. Yeah? And then now, we have in the Fai Kōrero space the values that are put in place as a root system for those action points that are our tikanga in order to attract our kawa. And in the karanga space, hey, we're looking to understand our purpose, our pūtake, and asking the question, what is the why that makes us cry? Yeah. And then in the wero, the biggest challenge is asking ourselves, who do we want to be? Yeah. Who are we? to attract what we want to bring into fruition. And that's uh, where I'm going to end. My little kōrero here is about you know, what are the principles, what are the mā tāpuno, yeah, that further empower that why that make us cry, um, that stimulates those values, uh, that it further empowers as a root system to our tikanga so that we can attract into a reality our kawa. Uh, nō reira, Thank you too much. To the committee, are there any parts I? I know. I've had the honour of being an Akomanga, a student of Mikairi, in the, um, over the years. So um, I've had the honour of hearing some amazing fakaro. Thank you for taking the time to come and share your fakaro with us. It's it's really beautiful to have it in this environment and to hear fakaro Māori, te ao Māori values coming through and helping us, helping to guide us. I really appreciate that. Kia ora. Tēnei um, right, so now we're back to the screen. This feels strange. We're in Atinana and then on the screen. So now we have um, Rire Noa Rangi Pope um, on behalf of Ngatawero or Hiranga Waka. Um, so, no mai hare mai. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so, um, you've got 10 minutes, and if there's any time within that, there might be some partai. But yeah, so, kea koe te rakau.
e muria i a i kata koto te aro a kupiki a mo kura kare wa ki te rangi e e ngauri waka e ke o Aotea o Tokomaru o Kura Upo o Tainui a rā te tiriti o Waitangi ko tau mai ki te pane pane o te ika nui a Māui a tiki tiki a taranga te nga koutou te nga koutou ko Aotea ko Tokomaru ko Kura Upo o Nora ko Tainui tēnei te mi iatu nei te mi iatu nei ki a koutou te nga koe a karepa Te tai au te kite a koe, he oi te whakaaro nui, kei reire koe. Maui whakapau wera wera kia kia tūpiki ake te tū o ngai Māori e no o nei te taone o te wanganui a taraika te nei kāmi. Tēnā nō koutou te kauni ero o pōneke, koutou kua pai whakaaro e pēia, e waka mana ai i a koutou anō i raro i te kaupapo o te waka takoto rautaki Māori. Nā, ki tā te tirohanga Māori, mā te waka piki i te mana o tō hoa, mā reira e waka mana ai koe, ia koe anō. So I just seen from, as I said, the three uru waka of Taranaki, Aotea waka, Tokomaru, Kura Haupo, and have connections with Tainui, to my mana yupoto on Raukawa side, my great-great-grandfather, no, sorry, great-great-great-grandfather was a Boylan from Ireland, and as such, that, that connects me to, to my Pākehā side here and all of those who are here by virtue of Te Tiriti or Waitangi. So it's safe to say that I have a personal stake in how this strategy is implemented in the next 10 years and, and the impacts they might have in the next 50 years for my ch future children in, in Mokopuna. Um, my name is Rede Noarangi. I'm involved in a few rangatai initiatives back home in my special paradise of South Taranaki, which you can trying to figure out where this virtual background is. Um, I'm also a research software engineer up at Victoria University of Wellington, and I'm involved in a few uh, initiatives with early career researchers, uh, Māori, rangatai Māori and our Pacifica relations. So I'd like to start off and say that the waka haurua um, it's a great analogy, and it speaks to the shared responsibility that I think that mana, whenua, and council, we all have to ensure a prosperous future uh, for Māori who live in our city. And as one of our kaikōrua has said earlier, if Māori thrive, we all do. As you probably figured, a waka haurua has two waka, ne? And as we have seen over the last hundred and how many years, these two waka have very, very different aspirations goals, world views. So perhaps something to think about for the, for the council waka, as well as the mana whenua waka, is what exactly are these goals? And where do they align, where they, do, where they don't align? Um, what are the culture that exists on each of these waka? And the tikanga, the kawa that each of these waka carry? Um, is the council happy with the culture that they carry? And does this, uh, I guess, represent the same aspirations that Pākehā have in Wellington? Um, if not, does, does, does that culture need to change? So I think um, partnership requires one to be just as introspective. Yeah. So I'm going to go um, to Taha Taiao. I think one thing that I've been asked by about my relation um, from our relations is our awa. Yeah our rivers and our streams. The Kumu Toto, the Waimapi, uh, these awa connect us to mana whenua narratives and Māori notions of well-being. The Waiora, the Waiua, and these, in which, I guess, in turn, speak to a sense of belonging that our rangatai can see, can hear, can feel. So connection is kind of what I'm speaking to here. So how do we foster a sense of connection with our awa, with our natural environment? Um, probably not by piping them all underground. Hey, Apitiatu, the way we treat our natural environment, my perspective, is a good indication of how we care for our manuhi. If you invite someone over to your house and you've got a dirty backyard and a messy kitchen, well, they probably don't want to stay there, or they're probably going to think that that's how you'll treat them. 
Um, moving to, I think, page 17, Te Wakapakari Pū Manawa. I think there was an, it was quoted on there about a STEM program. Tino Pai. Uh, Pū Hōro Academy over at Massey University comes to mind. Um, so why not something equivalent with uh, Victoria University? And uh, Mary and Barbara Rich and Co over at Apopo. So, so some of those initiatives, I think, would be really beneficial for, for, for our people. Um, I think something I'd like to see as well is the council taking more of an active role in partnering with local businesses, MOUs, agreements that put mana whenua interns, or moles, as sometimes we like to call them, uh, at in, in all levels and with our local businesses to give them opportunities, but also to kind of foster that leadership in, in different areas. Um, that's all I've got really got to say to speak to the strategy. Uh, 10 minutes is, 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 a, is a short amount of time, but I guess as a final thought uh, to everybody here, whana whenua, ngā kai kaunihira, kia kaha, ne? Be brave, be strong, and reach further than you've ever reached before. It's the only way we're going to get anything done. Kia ora tātou. Oh, kia ora. <laughs> he, you're getting a pucky pucky. <laughs> Um, are there any Pātai councillors, committee? No. Oh, Councillor Pennant has a Pātai. Uh, kia ora for that. That was wonderful. Uh, actually, I should have also possibly asked the last speaker too. Um, but I was just wondering, given the language is Tonga, and um, so I'm just trying to work that out of my own head about without we don't want to be doing cultural appropriation as Pākehā, but um, we want to uh, support that journey and the incorporation of the language into everyday life. Um, so is it right that, um, that the language should be used by everyone without that cultural appropriation? Um, That's a long one. Really? It might be a bit offline sometime. <laughs> I'm sure there are far more... Um qualified people to speak to those kinds of questions than me, but I'll, I'll give a response, I guess, and, and from, from my perspective, it, um, as the Waka Haurua kind of analogy um, speaks to it, it, it takes, you know, it takes a whole lot of people, a whole lot of processes and a lot of, whole lot of money to get things over the line. So we shouldn't rely on Māori only to, to revitalise a deal that was um, almost taken away from us by non-Māori. So I would push the cultural appropriation thing to the side and say, what are non-Māori, what are governments, councils doing to right the wrongs that they've done in the past? So they have an obligation, um, I would say, to actually help revitalise the deal because it was the same institutions that tried to take them away from us. Uh, kia ora, we've got a, a patai, I'm here patai anō, uh, Councillor Kondi. Kia ora tēnā koe no rangi. Um, I just wanted to follow up on your comments about um, the awa and the importance of, of that and, and the fact that most of our awa in the city have been piped and some of the aspirations to maybe reverse that or reconnect people with those awa. Can you talk to us a bit more about why that is so important in Te Ao Māori and the sense of belonging um, and that that can deliver for people? Well, you know, if we think about the Tahatayao, natural environment, well, it's all kind of interconnected. So our, our sense of well-being, I'm talking about a Māori well-being here, is, is innate, inextricably linked with the well-being of the natural environment. So if we are not well, or then our, our land is not well, and vice versa. So that's what I mean in terms of a in terms of a feeling of well being, or in terms of a, in terms of um, yeah, I guess I guess well being is what I'm speaking to in that in that regard. Um, in terms of connection, you know, it goes back to I think what someone else has said earlier today about having a Maori footprint um, in the in Wellington, which is um, quite non-existent in a lot of places, and and a good way to to kind of bring some of that back, some of that connection to the to our to our whenua, is to have a natural environment that we can have mana whenua narratives wrapped around, so we can speak to how these awa were used, how the kumutoto was used back in the day when we were trading flax along there down to the down to the port. 
um, how it was connected to Kumutoto Pa on the terrace, which is of course not there anymore. So, so how do we engage with our natural environment to to kind of create more narratives and have these narratives open, visible for everybody? So even non Maori can see that this is a this place was a place before all of the concrete, mm -hmm. and there was some life here um, at one point, and now it's shifted. But we can still talk about that and honor that past and feel feel connected to that past, even if we can't visibly see it. And hopefully in the future, we will be able to visibly see some of these things. Kia ora, thank you. Uh, kia ora, um, ngā mahi māha, um, anō uh, rere noarangi. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to come and kōrero kōrero with us. And I feel like we're all sitting here learning quite a lot in the process. So um, thank you very much for imparting some knowledge with us. We appreciate that. And um, ngā mahi ki o kia tūpuna hoki. Kia ora. All right, um, we are now up to... Um, I'd like to welcome Ross Davis, no more Haramaya no Ross, um, who's coming to speak to us on behalf of BGI. Um, welcome you to come up and um, share with us now. And uh, so you've got 10 minutes um, as well. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora koutou, uh, nga mihi ki te atua, uh, nga, nga, nga mihi ki a papatua anuku, and I may keep the tongue to Fenua, keep the mana Fenua, and I may keep the tongue to Tetriti. No, may he Kia Kota Katoa. Ross Davis, the Hoko, Kai Fakahari or BGI. Um, and yeah, I've, I've just uh, come, you wanted to acknowledge, uh, just really come along to acknowledge the journey, the uh, mana Fenua. Um, and the council have been on to get to this point, and uh, and I, I suppose to thank you for including um, us and um, Rangatahi uh, in the process, and and thank you for in, in remembering to in, invite us here today. Although I didn't manage to get uh, the five Rangatahi here with me who uh, were keen to come, but they'll probably be here for the the kai afterwards. So um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, um, I think uh, what has stood out for me um, in the strategy is uh, is page eight, um, uh, and in particular, not not uh, the words are great, um, but in particular um, the photograph of um, Alex Tanifa, and um, and the way that uh, he's a he's a young man. Uh, who has been brought up in Wellington um, with uh, all of the challenges. Uh, I won't tell you his story. It's his story to tell, obviously, but um, uh, all of the challenges which uh, many um, young Māori uh, experience and part of his journey has, has been with, with BGI. Uh, and part of his journey has been experienced a lot of a lot of aroha as well as those challenges, and that that comes through in that photo, both from uh, mentors in the in this community and and from the council. In fact, um, from Celia Wade Brown, um, who who asked him to uh, uh, be part of a tuia co couple with her and um, and mentor uh, each other and help her to understand. Um, what it's like to be a young Māori in in uh, Pōniki. Um, and yeah, just a little story. Um, the maker of the electric car got invited. Uh, Alex was also mentored on a on a program through BGI by a s sort of 67-year-old hunched, um, tall, quite uh, unusual looking Pākehā man. And um, he also had a, a very beautiful um, girlfriend. And he was invited to the mayor's house with the um, maker of the electric car at, to, to bring a partner. And um, he, he chose to, to um, ask uh, Philip to come, to come with him, not his, not his, uh, not his new girlfriend. And, uh, and I think that, I, I suppose I just wanted to um, give that example of... Um, I suppose working together as a community to Pākehā and Māori to support um, each other 
and um, and and he was he was supported to be in that relationship by the Tuia Kopapa, and um, the Tuia Kopapa is something which um, Karepa and um, Andy, Jill and um, Tamitha, many and the council have really supported that. And in my 40 years doing youth work, it's something which um, stands out to me as as one of the the, the greatest thing for for young Maori like like Alex and. Uh, and like Tamitha, in fact, as well. So, um, so I just wanted to uh, acknowledge, um, you know, that that this journey is not just about you know big strategies and all of that. It's about um, young Māori being able to look up to leaders um, uh, that have been through what they have been through, um, and uh, and experienced. Um, yeah, so I, I think the experience things like Alex has, and um, yeah, and I, and I suppose I just really wanted to thank thank you all for for sticking with this journey, um, and you know also to the the Pakeha councillors who who have always been on board, but especially to the um, Pakeha councillors who have struggled with with the journey and and. Um, who've begun to have the scales fall, fall from their eyes and um, and who've changed their position. And, I, and I've seen that happen. I just wanted to particularly acknowledge Andy and Sean um, in that regard. And and not just that, but the aroha around them uh, to support them on that journey. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I've got to say. Um, it, it's really just a big mahi to, to all of you. So, kia ora koutou. Yeah. Kia ora. So did you have some rangatahi who are going to turn up soon? Because I realised that we started you a bit early. Uh, um, are you? Well... Maybe they will. Uh, you're not sure. Weirdly, they, some of them were caught up in a health and safety meeting. <laughs> um, and and this, this is really... Uh, this kaupapa really is about health and safety. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll be here at some stage um, before midday. Oh. So, um, yeah. Well, they're welcome so, to be here at any stage. Yeah, they, they, their um, karepa um, and and the team provided uh, opportunities for them to have input, and um, and then have provided this opportunity to to uh, hear hear what their in, the input that that they gave has you know become, and um, yeah, I suppose I just wanted to say thank you for that. But also, I think it is. Uh, a good reminder when you look around the room, there aren't that many um, rangatahi here, yeah. and uh, I think it sort of behoves on us all to uh, to put an extra effort, including me, who didn't get them here, uh, so to, to actually include them in these processes and in these celebrations, and um, so, yeah, so kia ora. Mm. Very true, thank yeah. you. Were there any other pātai? Um, Mia Foster. Ross, not so much a part but a thanks. Um, and to thank you for all the mentoring that you have done for so many people, for so many rangatahi as well, um, over the many years in leading BGI. Uh, and also thank you for your help on our journey as well. And I can remember your very persuasive comments at the time we were considering um, unoffendable representation around this table, so I really appreciate what you said to us then. And also, seeing you mentioned um, the two-year programme, I had the absolute pleasure of meeting Annalise and having a really good conversation with Annalise uh, uh, earlier this week, and so thank you for nominating her right. uh, to the two-year programme. So I really appreciate that too. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. Mm. Oh, kia ora, ngā mahi, maoha, kia koe. Yeah. Right, now we're going to move on to Zoom again, and um, I'd like to welcome um, Gabriel Tupo, um, who's representing Tapu Te Ranga Marae. No mai, haere mai, um, Gabriel. Um, so you've got 10 minutes, and I'll um, hand over to you. If you've got any time within that 10 minutes, there might be a few partai. But um, looking forward to hearing what you have to share. Kia ora. Uh, kei te mara whenua, arā. Uh, te atia wa tarana ki whanui, te tūpuko hutika, ngā te tua rangatira. Uh, te maire o te rohi nei, ki te mihi kā koutou. Uh, kei te tia mana, ta reinga o tūwhare toa. Uh, te maraikura, Jill. Kei te mihi kia koe, kei te koromatua Andy, tēnā koe, wā kau kaunahira, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, thank you, um, Chair, for the um, 
uh, and all those that um, came before me, um, Ete Kaiporiro, uh, Kimua, Ross, um, and also just to mention and thank Ross for his service as a um, trustee of the Tapitiranga Trust. But um, uh, firstly, um, Madam Chair, I guess uh, I'll be speaking to the Tapitiranga um, Marae, but also on behalf of the Māori Wardens and their role during the um, Wellington protest, convoy protest in recent months. Um, so I just want to acknowledge um, the, that there are um, a number of um, our trustees are appointed by um, external um, appointing bodies, one of whom is the Mayor of Wellington and uh, Andy Foster appointed um, council of the, his appointee, which is um, Glenda Hughes. And Glenda Hughes has been a, um, also a regional councillor, a phenomenal uh, support to the uh, work of the trust in our um, rebuild. Um, and also uh, Ross Davis being um, uh, also an independent trustee, and of course, uh, local Arungatai uh, Member of Parliament, Paul Eagle. So just want to acknowledge those of our trustees who are from outside of the whānau um, of the marae. And really just to give you an update that um, the, we're continuing on our journey and um, at the moment in partnership with Kainga Water, um, um, with HUD um, Housing and Event Development uh, on a, um, a journey to um, explore our opportunities in terms of the rebuilding of our marae in Papakainga. And uh, Glenda Hughes is leading that, um, uh, that um, body of work uh, alongside the uh, whānau and, um, and the trustees. So very much at the feasibility um, stage still and working with council uh, office officers. And we just want to thank um, the officers for their support and their time uh, in assisting us, uh, whether it's directly um, to the Marae uh, Trust or um, to the contractors we're working with. Um, so we are at the stage of, of looking at um, the various zonings uh, and the opportunities there. Of course, um, something for Hutt City Council and also passed through the Wellington Regional Council reg uh, recently, a uh, question around uh, rates on uh, Māori-owned land. Um, so there's certainly some opportunities there as well. Um, so I, I, I suppose the, in terms of um, Tapatiranga Marae is to... Um, looking at Pātai around um, how can um, Tairahere, um, sort of um, Māori from um, other uh, outside of the Srohi um, who don't whakapapa here. And of course, as an ahika whānau, we've been here since the um, urbanisation of Māori in the 1950s. Um, and so looking at how can we support um, papakainga and um, marae development throughout uh, Wellington. Uh, with the support of uh, Mana Whenua as well. And of course, um, Jill, you were there when we had the um, uh, railing on uh, Tawatawa Maunga Reserve of the Pai Whenua, a tribute to uh, Rangihai Tau and Te Paraha. Now, there are also opportunities to work with uh, the other um, council uh, even partners, Te Atewa Taranaki Whanui, uh, on um, sort of a shared relationship partnership with Tapitanga moving forward. There will be a number of streets to be named uh, into the future in terms of our development and uh, also um, um, opportunities for um, shared kaupapa and programs. So that's um, basically in terms of um, Tapatiranga Marae, it's a question around how can council support um, the growth of basically housing our people? And I know that there are a number of um, entities and trusts that are working with our people, taking our people off the streets, out of cars and into homes. But how can we do that with our marae and our existing urban Māori um, authorities and organisations that have been here for many years? So capability building uh, and supporting through um, advice and so forth. Um, so I, I don't know, um, Chair, if you want me to move on to the next subject or take questions at this juncture. Are there any um, pātai on Tapu Tiranga, just from um, the kōrero that Gabriel shared? Um, I think you've explained it quite well where you're at. It's re it is really helpful to hear the, um, the background and how things are moving forward. It sounds really encouraging and um, great to hear that. So do you want to move on to Māori Warden now? 
Thank you. And, and also, um, Chair, just to acknowledge the Council for their support through the uh, fire of 2019 in, in terms of, um, you know, um, Remo support um, with your guys who work uh, with the uh, emergency response hits and so on. So mm. all of that um, uffy throughout and those relationships that were built carry uh, continue to this day. Mm. And yes, in um, terms of um, Māori wardens, what we'd like to see is what is the strategy on um, safety in terms of the Māori wardens um, space? So some of you know we were played an integral role um, throughout what uh, internally we called um, Operation Pipitea. And that um, commenced on February the 12th uh, in response to um, a presence of our own Māori people uh, within the protest at Parliament. And uh, working in partnership with uh, Mana Whenua and with the police um, to keep the, um, to uphold really what eventually became known as Takahu uh, or Te Raukura. And, um, and that kaupapa, as you well know, uh, is about um, maintaining the modi and the safety of that rohi in, um, throughout Wellington. And the, um, that continues today in terms of other kaupapa around the uh, rohi, including Shelley Bay. But getting back to the Māori wardens, um, a question of community safety uh, in this strategy um, as part of um, the principles already outlined, um, particularly from, it is part of a whānau order, it is part of um, tino ranga tiratanga and um, what I'd like to see is the Māori wardens um, who currently are in partnership through the Pōneki Promise under the leadership of Suzanne Tamaki would like to see an increased capability there in terms of resources. Uh, working with, um, just want to acknowledge um, Paolo Fuaono, um, who has who supported us uh, as a constant contact on behalf of Council and the safety team throughout the protest activity. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge the council officers who did attempt and try to secure resources for us. Unfortunately, there was no budget uh, provision from council for the much needed resources we required throughout the occupation. So uh, moving forward, we'd like to actually see some um, dollar figures or a commitment of some sort to community safety. And we uh, would envisage um, Māori wardens working um, side by side in partnership with the Hapaiaki team. What does that look like in terms of uh, capacity and capability um, moving forward to so that we can have a continued um, safety presence in Wellington, uh, which many of our partner agencies, including MetLink, including um, business, local businesses, found um, was beneficial and um, really helpful throughout that time. Don't know if there's any part of each year. Kia ora, there any part um, with regards to Māori Wardens? Um, are you, oh, I've got a uh, Pātai. Um, how, how, how's the team going? You know, obviously it's a growing team. There's um, more people coming on board and keen to be involved. Yes. Um, so what the team's doing well, and what we actually have to do is we need to pull in Māori wardens from throughout the region, from Te Awakarangi, from Purirua, to assist with that um, process activity. Um, but what we found is we were lacking in some um, vital pieces of resources um, and and perhaps um, there's a, there would be a flow on effect from having um, capabilities, resources in place to recruitment. Um, so it's well and good to go out and for us to recruit, but to have that extra layer of support um, is probably something we need, we need to look at with council. Mm. Kia ora. Um, we've got a couple more parts. I one from Councillor Fitzsimons. Uh, kia ora, Gabrielle. Can you just tell us, um, you commented around the resources and the protest and that, that, you know, we weren't able to secure them. Are those discussions with council officers ongoing at this time? Is there a formal process set up to ensure that those, that the issues that were raised and that are not lost? Yeah, so there are two things uh, um, in answer to your question, uh, uh, and that would be uh, one, the, there is a process, and I just want to acknowledge uh, Councillor Fitzsimons' um, role in, in assisting us through that process. And, um, excuse me, also the, um, that, that is ongoing between officers and um, the ministers, various relevant ministers' office, 
um, whether that be DIA or TPK in assisting us with um, securing those resources. But also um, in terms of, um, there are some other things um, in the pipeline at the moment, and one of which is exploring a space uh, supported either by regional or, or local Wellington City Council for our Māori wardens to operate as a sort of a central hub so that we can uh, easily respond um, to kaupapa events and incidents throughout Wellington City. And that is um, being spearheaded. We, um, he's recently left his role, but um, Scott Gallacher, our um, general manager of Metlink, and Paolo also working in to explore um, a possible space. So there are a number of um, inquiries going on um, to support our, our wardens. But of course, as you know, um, Councillor Fitzsimmons, that doesn't happen overnight. No, oh good, I'm just glad there is. And obviously, please do come to us because we want to find ways to support you. Kia ora, Kia ora yes. Uh, got a pātai from Mayor Foster. Kia ora, Gabrielle, and thank you for the work you're doing. Um, can you just be a bit more specific? I'm, I'm picking up that there's some equipment and there's some... Um, uh, and some uh, a base to operate from are the kind of things you're talking about. What are the things which, so you can just be really specific about the kind of things you're after and uh, just following from Councillor Fitzsimon's question about uh, how we might help out. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, the things you've named are some of those um, sorts of resources. I mean, uh, from um, support with um, even, um, say, technology um, support. So com communications, uh, access, that kind of thing. Communications, yeah. uh, access to um, programs or networks, um, the ability to um, uniform our, our Māori wardens out there, equip them with the resources, what we call our GT gear. So our day-to-day -day, um, uniforms, um, things like torches and so forth. Um, so a lot of that day-to-day -day gear, but also um, it, it could also be... Um, <coughs> tapping into council networks as well. So it's not just the physical resources, but human resource uh, expertise and that sort of thing. Um, so we are also working with the police on some of that. Uh, police is uh, trying to support us with um, the ability to mobilize and deploy wardens via uh, transportation. And that could look like something like vans and other equipment. So I think what, what's happened is the protest um, highlighted for us the gaps that exist but also the opportunities, the opportunities for council and through this strategy and future strategies to make this a, an ongoing priority, particularly with what's happening in the city, Mr. Mayor, the gang activity, um, and many of those whānau whom we know. Kia Gabriel, thank you. Um, thank you so much, um, Itirangatira, um, Gabriel, for coming to Kōrero with us today and sharing um, the Tapu Tiranga Fano um, experiences at the moment, and also for the Māori Water. We really appreciate you taking the time to um, to come and do so. Kia pai to ahi ahi. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. All right, uh, committee. That brings us to the end of public participation. So what we're going to do now is we've got morning tea and we will uh, ask that people can get back here really promptly at 11.20 because Kura um, will be online um, to join us um, when uh, Karepa will introduce the paper. So um, the morning tea is in the room next door but also in the big room. So um, our public participants who are here in uh, Tinana, you're welcome to come and join us for morning tea. It's a great opportunity to just have a bit of a follow-up kōrero and I'm sure there'll be um, much to discuss. So um, we'll see you back here in 25 minutes. And all public participants, you're welcome to come back here after, welcome to be in the other room to watch. It's being um, live streamed in there and obviously
Tamaki Whanui, uh, Nicholson Block Settlement Trust, um, that he will have some kōrero, and then hopefully by the time we've got through that, um, we'll have kura online. That is the plan. Thank you, everybody, for being patient. Um, so we will move on to the next part of the agenda. So no my karepa wo kite hora iti kōrero. So I welcome you, karepa, to um, introduce this report and maybe also introduce the people with you, just because I know that you know we've got people who might not know who's who. Kia ora. Kapai, um, tēnā koe, uh, kei, kei te marae kura. Uh, o te rā, tēnei au e tautoko ana i ngā mihi koa tukuna rā ki rongi te tepu i tēnei rā. Uh, ki te whānui tango o ngā kai kōruru i haere mai rā i te ata nei, uh, ki te kōruru ki a koutou, uh, nei rā te tautoko. Uh, o te rā ki ngā mana whenua koutou koa hara mai rā uh, kanohi, uh, e pūrangi, uh, ki te tautoko i te kaupapa, uh, te atiawa, uh, tarana ki oanui, Ngāti toa koutou rā, kua haramai rā, uh, koe hoki tēnā Liz, um, e mihi ana ki a koutou mm. tēnā tātou. Um, it's an exciting day indeed, um, and uh, we do need to continue in the spirit that most of uh, the speakers have uh, added today in acknowledging mana whenua, uh, both through uh, the representatives to uh, your committee, uh, Liz, uh, but also mana whenua who have arrived, uh, Pakaira, uh, and uh, Kushla as well as uh, Anudi of Taranaki Maunga and of course Lee uh, online uh, with our wonderful new uh, agreement that we signed only on Friday last week. It's great to see our mana whenua uh, parties uh, fully involved uh, in the work uh, that we here uh, and Wellington City Council are doing uh, with our wonderful hui in the middle to remind us of that agreement as well. So, tēnā um, uh, Just as a way of introduction, um, uh, Johnny, as Manager of Strategy, has uh, come on board uh, just before Christmas, I think, to help um, paddle uh, this waka of ours, I guess, uh, to use that metaphor. Uh, and uh, Akushla D, okay, oh, well, I keep saying Carol because that's uh, uh, what I had known uh, my tuahine here as, um, but uh, uh, D has been helping us from day one with the strategy as well uh, as our, our key writer, which was about 12 months ago. Um, and of course, uh, Pakaira Rei uh, won't be a new face to many of you around the table, but is here uh, with Mana Whenua uh, as well to, to support today. So um, it's, it is exciting to put this on the table in front of you at the um, it is aligned to the direction, uh, and I don't think there's a lot more I can say about the direction uh, that hasn't already been said by the speakers. Um, uh, but it is aligned to your direction that you have clearly given us as an organisation to work with our mana whenua, and that's evident with them here today. It's aligned to your direction uh, to us to co-design something with uh, the community, uh, and we have spent over a year now going out with our uh, well wonderful Wellington community to be able to design up what is the strategy that you find in front of you. Um, and that includes the likes of our CCOs, as you've heard from uh, this morning, that includes the likes of our businesses and our community, our organisations, everyone that's in this community that finds uh, Wellington as a place to either live, uh, to uh, play, to work, uh, or otherwise. Uh, we've been really um, determined to be able to do that in an authentic mana enhancing way for Māori. Uh, and it is thanks to the likes of Dee uh, and also Naina who in those very, very early days picked up this kaupapa uh, and pushed it for, uh, for you as a, as a city council. Um, so it is unique, it is different. It is significant as well in all of those kinds of ways. Uh, it's unique because it's not necessarily uh, how we would create normal strategies in, in the world. Uh, it is through a Māori metaphor, it is through a really strong uh, base that comes from an ao Māori, uh, from Mātauranga Māori. Uh, that might mean that it's a little bit confusing in some aspects, that might mean that some of our community uh, needs to um, take a bit of time to get to understand it and get to see what the kind of direction is, uh, but I believe that that will make our community a lot more stronger uh, once we, we have some time to sit down and look at those kinds of things. Um, it does focus on four key uh, aspects for Māori, as you can see in there. Uh, it's no uh, news to any of you that language, culture, identity are important for Māori uh, in the city. It's nothing that they haven't told us for the last 182 plus years. Uh, it's no uh, shock to any of you that the environment is a really key aspect to them as well. Uh, both our land, both our water, uh, all of those things that are also uh, priorities of yours as the council has set out through your current LTP as well. Uh, I guess uh, in the, uh, the other two aspects uh, are focused on people, uh, the well-being of our people and the well-being of our community, which is, again, one of the really key instrumental things that all of you around the table are here for. Um, and 
intertwined into all of that is our need to do this with others, uh, and to, to do this in partnership with Manafina, with Māori, uh, to, to do this with our community as opposed to them. So those are the sort of key things that I think you'll find that's in there. Um, it is an enabling strategy, uh, Ewama. It is an enabling strategy which has set that high-level direction for you. Um, it's interesting to see that recently Statistics New Zealand has put out that by 2040, about 40% of the population will be Māori. Ooh. And actually over half, if, if you add in uh, the Pacific uh, community into that, we go over the half of New Zealanders will have some whakapapa uh, to Te Moana Nui Akiwa. Um, if you look at that too, um, about 50% of the Māori population at that time will be under 35. Mm. And so, as you've heard this morning uh, from our rangatahi representatives, um, the focus on our rangatahi, the focus on the future, the focus on getting the things right uh, for um, not only 10 years ahead, but actually 40, 50 years ahead of us today um, is really important. And intertwined into that, I'm, I'm not a data or statistics people, but um, intertwined into that, if you look at the current population of, say, uh, deaf children in Aotearoa, 44% of them are Māori. And so when we hear from the likes of the Accessibility uh, Advisory Group this morning, uh, putting a spotlight on those kinds of um, communities that are within our wider community, it's really great to see that they're in support of this kind of strategy as well, that will work for them, uh, that will work for our takatapuhi communities, that will work for, um, th I'm going to miss somebody out now by uh, <laughs> starting in that, that, that team. But, uh, it's, going to, it's going to work for a lot of people. Um, and over the last five years, uh, if we're looking in the, the sort of economic uh, well-being of Māori, over the last five years, the economic uh, portfolio has increased by 60% in the Māori space. That's to over 70 billion uh, in Aotearoa New Zealand. So if we think about the next five years, if we think about the next 10 years, there's going to be lots of significant change. And you, as Wellington City Council, are going to be... Um, steaming ahead in a really strong way um, with adopting a strategy. Uh, no one else in the country has been as brave and as bold as you are uh, to be able to do this, uh, with the exception of Auckland, who's legislated to do this. Uh, so um, I don't think there's much more to say, um, uh, except for Amihi to all of those people who have been involved in this kaupapa. Uh, I know usually in these settings, uh, a lot of you will look to us uh, as the three or four sitting here in front of you, but actually it's been, uh, to not sound cliche, um, it's been uh, the work of a village, uh, the work of a lot of people who have been uh, having an input into this over uh, the whole entire 12 months since uh, the deliberations of LTP last year, this time uh, approximately last year. Um, but definitely uh, through the leadership of the likes of Dee and Nina in the early days and through into Johnny and his team in the recent days, it's been great to put this on in front of you. So I'm going to introduce you to Mana Whenua, uh, to uh, the CEO is, again, no new face to you, uh, but the CEO of Taranaki Oanui, uh, Lee, uh, to have a quarter on behalf of Mana Whenua, one of our key partners in the strategy. Kei a koe, kei taku tuakana. Uh, tēnā koe kārepa, e da mōri na koutou ka mihi o te ata ki a koutou katoa, uh, e te kaunihira o, o, o Pōneke, uh, ngā, ngā kai kaunihira o Pōneke, uh, ngā, ngā mema o te pūroro rangaranga, uh, me oku whanaunga o Ngāti Toa, o Te Atiawa, o, o Taranaki Whānui, ngā mihi nunui ki a koutou katoa i tēnei ata. Um, uh, mōri na, um, my morning salutations to you all. Um, we are getting to a brisk morning and great days. Um, to, to you, Mia, Andy Foster, uh, Morena, uh, to our, our Chair, Councillor Jill, Jill Day, Morena, uh, Chief Executive Barbara McKero, and members of the Wellington City Council Executive Team, uh, Tēnā Koutou Katsua. Um, just before I start, I, I just wanted to um, flip back to Friday and the... Um, the amazing uh, afternoon that we had together and uh, reflecting on that. And it was, it was really an honour uh, for Te Atiawa Tanaki Whanui and our Ngāti Tōr Whānau. Uh, we were very humbled to be able to pour for you into our Mariah Pipitea. Um, and it was great to meet a number of you that um, I personally haven't met and uh, be able to put names to faces. So. Um, Thank you for uh, a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and um, put together by uh, Te Mataaho Aronui and um, thank you very much for that. Um, 
Right. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity to um, participate in the corridor this morning and about our Tupiki Ora Māori strategy for Wellington City Council and our iwi of Te Atiawa, Tariki Whanui and our whanaunga uh, Ngāti Tōrangatira. Um, one of the things that stands out for me um, is, is this, the Tupiki Ora Māori strategy provides that pathway for our collaboration and partnership. Um, and, and, and very similar to what Karepa says, it, it actually provides that connection, that whakapapa back to our whenua, back to our moana, back to our awa and our streams. Um, and most importantly, I guess, is, is, is back to our people and not necessarily just iwi Māori, uh, but it's also back to our our, um, our Māori community, but just the Wellington city community at large, um, just the diverse range of, of people that we have in our city. Um, so although it is a Māori strategy, it actually does, it does give connections into other areas of our community. Um, I'd also just like to um, make some comment around the, the effort um, by the Tamata Aho Aronui team um, Karepa, um, Johnny, um, uh, Manda, and um, supported by, by um, uh, Mapuna, uh, which is the Shia Shia, and the efforts that went into capture that vision, uh, the objectives, the principles that we're going to work with to attain the, the Pai Watu, uh, the Pai Tata, Pai Tafiti, uh, and, the, and our Pai Wuranga, and you know, our near to far horizons. Um, for, for us to achieve uh, in partnership uh, together. Um, I, I, I really do need to um, make comment to, to Karapa and his team because I really do believe that the efforts that have gone in here have been exemplary. Um, when, we, when we look at the document, um, you know, yes, as Karapa said, it's, it's actually very different. It, it's quite different to what you would normally receive uh, as a strategy document. I, I love it, um, and I love it because it's different, and I love it because it, it really does simply spell out what, what's required to be done. And, uh, you know, we look at the elements of that of that walker and the walker journey that we, we take together, um, the the destinations that we will achieve together. And, you know, though, as, as Cardiff has touched on, and I'll, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll just reiterate what they are, you know, Wellington is recognised locally and globally as a culturally rich, a historic with its own history and its own narrative. I, I think that's really strong. Um, it's, it's, you know, we have a harbour that we can really, really focus on. We have a city that's right next to it. Um, when we include the other, the second one is around Te Ao Māori and, and the use of te reo, um, a, a ways to celebrate our culture and language, you know, our, our language is, is not just for our iwi or Māori, it's for everyone to use. I think that's fantastic. Uh, our third one around iwi and Māori are active participants in decision-making. That's a really big one. And, uh, and we have that opportunity now to be able to do that with you and alongside you. Uh, and, and lastly, the number four, um, iwi and Māori, if you like, uh, in are supported and prioritised in those areas which we all know we've spoken about around their social and cultural, environmental and economic, you know, the well-being uh, of, of our people um, within our city. And that extends out further as well. So um, partnering with Wellington City Council with our Tupiki Ora, our Māori strategy, allows us to co-navigate our waka, our waka haurua. Uh, therefore, our journey is actually reached together one doesn't get there before the other. So that's really important. Um, and just finally, um, uh, we see the Tupiki Ora Māori strategy as an anchor. And it's an anchor for our city. It's an anchor for our iwi. It's an anchor for our Māori community at large. Um, and, and, and I think the, that the strategy we have now will, 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 hold, will hold us for a long time to come from today. So. Thank you very much, and uh, I like things nice and short. Kia ora. Is there anything else that needs to be shared from down your way? <laughs> I think we're good there.
Thank but you. I, I feel like I'm trying to do that stalling, like in my favourite movie when I was a child, The Sound of Music, when they're trying to stall so that they can escape. <laughs> this time we're trying to, I'm trying to stall so that someone can get here, but um, it looks like that might not happen um, for this particular part, but we'll um, move on now just to see if there are any partai from the committee around this paper um, and the strategy. Councillor Condi. Kia ora, thank you. Um, I just wanted to follow up on comments from um, from Rere no Rangi Pope, who came and spoke to us this morning about the importance of our awa. And um, I know that daylighting of streams is something that kind of came out in some of the early conversations. And would just like to kind of understand where you see that sitting within the strategy um, and, and how it's captured in there. Tēnā uh, tātou katoa, kia ora councillor. Um, the, the critical link um, within the strategy is in our te ake nga te, te taiao caring for the environment and um, both within the short term and long term um, actions uh, really speak to supporting existing and new initiatives um, led by mana whenua anchored in sort of Māori knowledge systems uh, that, that enable that the regeneration of wellbeing and, and certainly within that context um, and we've heard it through a number of our speakers this morning and certainly clearly affirmed through mana whenua is, is around the well-being of our waterways. And within that, um, in terms of regenerating what, what the strategy speaks to is the modi, the modi order, the life force, um, the well-being, connection. And, and certainly within that context, daylighting is, is part of um, a range of tools to... to um, enable those streams and waterways to breathe again and to enable connection and, and certainly the importance of um, the work of at a catchment level, if you, if you like, and certainly Wellington is a city of water. Um, so within that context, we, we are developing a council action plan and, and that's where those sort of high-level actions will then be interpreted in, in, across council business units and CCOs in terms of how we give life and action and delivery to those aspects. Um, and then just want to also acknowledge the Elandia and the partnering work they are doing with mana whenua in, in kia Modi ora te, te kai whara whara. So, so it is significant, it's important, um, work is underway, but certainly through the action plan we'll, we'll, we'll bring that to life and being able to bring that back to this committee around actions moving forward, so kia ora. Kia ora, thank you for that pātai and um, great timing. I'm going to hand back over to Karepa because Kura has joined us. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, Kura is also one that doesn't really need an introduction, but uh, uh, Kura uh, te nākoe te tipua o Taranaki Oanui uh, o Te Atiawa. Um, uh, kei taku tuakana, um, uh, ka hoa te te rākau ki ākoe. Kura is the current chair uh, of Te Runanga Nui o Te Atiawa, uh, ki te upoko tika, uh, and... Um, has joined us online. So, kei akwe, um, kura, uh, ko oti a uh, li, uh, ana kōruro, ana kei akwe te wā. Um, te tua tahi mihi rawa tura ki a koutou ngā kai kaunehere e no oana a uh, kai tua a uh, huri rauni te tepu nei. Uh, firstly, thank you, thank you, um, uh, councillors and uh, karepa. Um, uh, probably in alignment with what Lee has expressed, the two picky orders about our expression of our cultural, our cultural expression and views of how we see the future of of, of where we want to navigate, um, and how it um, how it is a very close relationship uh, from the from our signing last week with the Takaihere, is basically the the map, the plan that we uh, wish to work uh, collaboratively to help co-design co-lead um, towards a better future, not only for mana whenua, but for all Māori, but also to sharing uh, under Article 4 of the treaty, um, the, the ability to express our culture through our cultural expression and the things that we do. Uh, tu Pikiora is an expression of that, um, born out of the Tākai Here, and they both actually, uh, both documents actually complement one another. The to picky order is the the map of how we where we wish to go, and the Takai document is the vehicle in which we 
um, as uh, collectively both council, mana whenua and Māori will navigate the challenges that we have ahead of, exciting challenges I must say, exciting challenges. So um, to cut a long story short, the, the, the double hole canoe is about us working collaboratively and navigating, co-leading, co-designing, so that I believe will only further enrich not only council, but enrich the wider community of who we as mana whenua are, and, and to share it not only with Māori, but we want to share um, a possible alternative way of how we navigate um, our next 10 years. Uh, although it's pretty short, uh, we'd like to, how do we navigate, but also bring along our future leaders that are coming through to take it to the next level of success. So I don't have too much to say. I fully support to Pukiora because um, it complements uh, our thoughts, our way of thinking, um, our worldview, and it acknowledges the commitment um, that council is showing that when asked for our narrative, there's a commitment, commitment to developing a stronger relationship based on our past into the present and setting the platform for the future. Um, and I just want to conclude this that there with the saying, um, ko te tātai arorangi he kaiarataki te rā, and it all has to do with navigation and moving forward, that the objects, the objects of the sky determine the actions of the day. And so we've set um, the two procura, which is the objects of our long-term vision, and that's setting the platform for how we today must navigate to a better future. Noreira mihira wa tura kiokoto. Oh, tēnā koe, te rangatira, kia ora. Um, thank you um, for jumping out of your busy day to um, come and share your um, whakaro with us. We really appreciate that, kura. And um, thank you also, Lee, um, online. And I also do want to acknowledge Pekaira, who's um, sitting with he ati nana today. Um, tēnā koe, um, nga mihi. Um, so I actually do have a, a partai, and I don't know if anyone else does as well. I haven't got anyone else on the list. But um, my question is, uh, sometimes when we've agreed to strategies and things before, people have queried um, when we have um, things within the strategy that council doesn't directly deliver on, so, you know, like health or those sorts of things. Um, and I'm just wondering if, um, because... Obviously, this has a complete te ao Māori lens. Whether you can help us, I guess, to sort of understand the absolute importance of actually speaking to those things that we don't necessarily directly deliver. So, obviously, I have some ideas in Whakaro, but I'd really love to hear from the team because this strategy is amazing with the way that it brings through those values, and I think it would be good to be able to articulate that so that people are really clear and understand our role in this city. Kia ora. Yeah, a good point. Um Councillor, I think the uh, the quarter we heard from our community is that actually we need to start thinking a bit more holistic and actually widen our sort of scope as opposed to these are the services that we deliver alone. It is not the council's responsibility, for instance, to revitalise Te Reo Māori in, in the country or in any of the cities that they're in. But we do have a contribution towards that and we can um, uh, ensure that the enabling conditions are there to enable Te Reo Māori to be revitalised in our city. There are efforts that we can do within our remits, within our services that we provide as a city council that support the revitalization of Te Reo Māori. And so uh, the strategy in the form that you see it in front of you is thinking more in the holistic, wider kind of views that are important for Māori in the city. The challenge, as uh, Johnny has talked about, is that over the next little wee while, we're going to then uh, simmer this down on your approval today. We're going to simmer this down into an action plan, which will then clearly articulate what is your contribution towards these big goals. But actually, the strategy as it is, is going to enable a blueprint to be here in the city for anybody who picks us up and read it. Anybody from our CCOs, anybody to a organisation, a community residence organisation, anybody as a company here in Wellington could pick up this kind of strategy and find themselves a connection to this, which will support the aspirations of not only mana whenua, but actually of Māori inside the city as well. Rawe. Um, are there any other partai? Nope. OK, we're going to um, move on to um, the paper now. So... Um, Gotta find my bits of paper. Um, so thank you very much, um, guys. 
All right, so I'm going to move the paper um, and then um, I have asked um, Liz Kelly if she would like to second it. So I'll, I think um, I feel like this paper has been very well introduced today already and there has been some amazing whakaaro, um shared. So in some ways I'm not going to repeat what's been said there but I'm going to speak from a bit of a council experience and just, you know, where we're at as a council. Um, so uh, tuatahi... Um, uh, it's iwi o tēnei rohi a te atiawa ki te upoko te ika, ngāti tua rangatira nei rā te mahi mai o hā ki a koutou. Tua roa kei aku hoa, nō te kaune hira, tēnei te mahi ki a koutou. Um, and I would particularly um, like to acknowledge um, from mana whenua in the room today, we have a few people here, but would particularly like to acknowledge you, Liz Kelly, um, for being with us at the table and um, for the journey that you've been on with us for the last um, wee while. Uh, we really, really do appreciate having you around the table. And I'd also like to acknowledge Pekaira um, Ray, who has, um, on my journey on council, um, provided a lot of total support to me personally, but to many people at council and helps to guide us. And I want to acknowledge you for taking the time to be here with us today, Pekaira, and also um, to our rangatira online um, as well, who have um, popped out of their busy um, kaupapa to, to be here to support the strategy. And that shows um, how involved um, mana whenua have been along the way. And obviously there are many people who couldn't be here today who um, who send their thoughts and wishes um, to council um, through this process. Um, and I'd really like to um, take the time to acknowledge our public participants, um, the CCOs, the NGOs, the people out there who are doing the mahi in our city and really um, helping to show us how we can um, move forward. Um, there's so much richness that has been shared and um, I feel like we've all learnt something here today. Um, and we have so much to learn from each other in this city and I think it's really important for us to acknowledge as a council that you know we're on a journey too and as um, has been said, this is a map for us and you know we want people to help and add to our map. Um, I received an email that I did just want to quickly share from Liz Green from the Basin Reserve um, who just she wanted to share that um, she's enjoyed the collaboration and engagement to date with the development of the strategy and has admired the dedication and enthusiasm throughout the process um, and that this is a speci special piece of work and, um, and they, they really can't wait to play their part in bringing it to life and it's really fantastic to hear from organisations who are um, on the ground um, experiencing the support of um, Mata Matahu and Arunui um, Council. Uh, so uh, when I arrived at council this morning, I walked in and I thought there's something missing. And so we went and had a kōrero and um, we made sure that the hoi um, from uh, our, our um, agreement last week, Takai Hire, came into the room to, um, I guess, remind us of the importance of tūpiki ora in, in um, collection with Takai Hire. Um, as as Kura has acknowledged, um, Takai Hiri is, is our vehicle, and for me, it's also that reminder that we um, we want to keep moving, and this is this is the way that we focus and we work together to keep moving, and also at the at the same time, not leaving each other behind. Um, and I think important to acknowledge um, the the tupakiora, the waka haurua, and the fact that um, that that waka is. Is, um, is the base in which we can, ex we can exist together and we can move forward together. Uh, so I want to acknowledge Karepa for your guidance and your leadership and to Barbara for um, your support and guidance and leadership. Um, but to Karepa, um, you know, bringing these strategies to council in, in a year is actually a pretty big um, a, a mammoth effort and um, I really do want to acknowledge your drive and your leadership in the way that you've done that to bring everyone along with you so thank you it's a it's an honour to have seen that and that, that work um, and I do want to acknowledge that um, Mata Aho Aronui has been acknowledged as a force of nature and um, I'm experiencing that um, and just feel so encouraged to see and I'm going to say all the names again because I think it's really exciting and to councillors I'll explain why I think that is in a minute but to Naina, Johnny, Manda, Anna, Kohe, Paratene, Te Poiakino, Silas, Tafiao, Ali, Aklusha D um, and Miriama um, you know, councillors, when we resourced um, council to be able to deliver on this last year in the long-term plan, look at what we've uh, look at the people that we've brought to our council to deliver. The talent is is amazing, and um, and I think it's important that you know we see and we understand that those decisions have a direct impact on the fact that we can bring a strategy um, in under a year that tells us um, you know that we can do this. We can we can um, map our way forward. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that, 
that the team um, has worked really hard today um, to help all of our public participants feel really welcomed. I'm not sure if councillors realised, but public participants were all welcomed into the room next door and um, had a karakia and talked about what was coming in the day. And I thought, what a wonderful example of manakitanga. And I hope that these are some things that we can actually pick up as a council and do across the board, not just when we're doing um, a strategy like Tupaki Order, but actually on a daily basis, we make sure that people who come and share with us are really welcomed and, um, and helped to feel comfortable because it's not a comfortable place for many people. So thank you to the team for your mahi on that because that is, it makes a difference. And I do again want to um, acknowledge and remember um, people who were here before who have helped us to get to this point. So to Nikki Karu, Renee, Anna, Te Puritanga, and also to our dear Billy, um, that, that they have helped us to, um, to come to this, this place today. Um, so our city is facing some challenges, just a few. I think most Wellington, Wellingtonians know them, but I will just list a few of them. Obviously, we're facing a housing shortage. Um, the impacts of climate change being seen across our city um, as, as, as a daily occurrence, and that our role to um, look at mitigation and adaptation, um, we need to make sure we have strong strategies. Um, we have opportunities to impl implement a transport network for the future. Uh, we know that we have a need for water infrastructure that actually works and that acknowledges te mana o te wai. And we've heard lots about our awa this morning and, um, and the role that um, Tupiki Ora can play um, in helping us to improve on that. We have um, city safety, wellbeing and social cohesion challenges. Um, and... Uh, we will talk about that a bit more in a minute around um, Māori wardens, but you know we see that when we can provide resourcing, then we can have responses that work for our community. Um, and we have um, so we have big challenges that must be faced and responded to and solved. And so this strategy holds the answers and will change the city for the better. It will mean Wellington is better place to fix our housing, water, and transport. If, if Council had properly listened and shared power with mana whenua in the past, I'm confident we wouldn't be facing these problems. And we've actually, I have to say, Liz Kelly can tell us, we've had exam an example of that in recent times when we listen and we hear different perspectives and perspectives that have been here for a very long time. It does change the way that we, uh, we make our decisions. But the past is the past. Um, gone are the days when these strategies and approaches are stored in the bottom drawer and reviewed every few years. This one will inform council decisions on every important issue facing Te Whanganui Atara. Tupiki Ora is about the future. Um, and I do just want to acknowledge at this point that um, because uh, I know I've had some conversations with people from the media and they still want to, they keep asking me, but what's it going to look like? Um, and that we have an action plan coming and hopefully in August where we will really be talking about some of the, the, the nitty gritty things that we'll see. And we, you know, people are aware of some of the opportunities, but today we really wanted to focus on the fact that we've got to, we've got to get the how we do these things right. Because sometimes if you focus on the end goal, you damage the relationships that you're trying to build. So we need to make sure that we, we, um, we do this in a, in a good way. And because to me this strategy is all about relationships and we can see that with the conversations and what we've heard today. Uh, and so there is actually, um, if you want to bring up on the screen, oh, it's already there. We have actually got an amendment. I said that we weren't going to have amendments today because um, obviously this strategy, and it's really important that we acknowledge that this has been co-constructed and that uh, we want to keep the integrity of that. But um, I think that this amendment actually provides us as a, it's a good reminder as to why we need this strategy. So obviously we heard from Gabriel about Māori wardens and the challenges through the protests, and it was really hard for council to respond to that, and it wasn't any person's fault. There's no kind of, someone didn't make the right decision, it's just that it didn't really sit easily with, within our processes and what we needed to do. So um, it sort of sits there as, a, as an example of some of the things we need to do to, to move into the space so that we can respond faster and more appropriately. So. Um, it's really just talking about how we can support Māori wardens going forward. Um, I did just want to talk about, on page 35 of the strategy, it talks about um, Auckland City Council having an independent statutory board. And when I got onto council, one of the things I was like, how can we have one of those? And, um, and then did a bit of research and found out that when the government agreed to the... Um, the uh, super city in Auckland, they kind of said, well, no one else is going to get this. Um, but I don't think that this council should hold back. And I think that, as I've said to many people, the processes that we've put in place to have mana whenua at the table and to have Māori Ward, um, they need more interrogation and more 
um, more opportunity. Having one seat at the table as Ngāti Tua or one seat as Taranaki Whanui, it's very hard at times to make change. So we need to think about what we can do to increase that representation and it may look quite different to what it is now. But we've made, a, we've made some steps. Um, and so yeah, I want to acknowledge that um, all of the things that we've done, te tui, hu, mana whenua seats, Māori ward, tākaihere, um, you know, they were all our commitments to the things that we want to see change in this city, um, but they actually are what make tupiki order possible. So, you know, it's having those relationships and it's having those aspirations that mean that we can then map our way forward, which is what has been done so beautifully in this strategy. And I quickly just want to speak to the taking a village and, um, and want to just speak to, I was talking to Ross in the break and he pointed out that um, Alex, who he was talking about in, the, um, in his kōrero, is actually uh, um, photographed in our strategy and um, what a great way to connect um, kaupapa that we have happening at Council with the impact that it has on our community and the flow on that it has. Um, so thank you, Ross, for bringing us that, um, that kōrero and also actually for reminding us that our rangatahi, when we put the, the time in and the support, we receive so much more than what we've put in um, as a community. And so to Jackson and Rirenua Rangi who have taken the time to share with us today, this strategy is for you and for your mokopuna. This is for the future. Um, and I think um, my, my partai before about the, um, about the fact that this strategy speaks to things that um, that we don't necessarily deliver in this city. Um, it really came to my, the, the top of my mind early on when I was a councillor and I had someone come and speak to me from the north and they were talking about the challenges for some of our Māori whānau um, in Porirua and even um, Tawa and, and within Wellington um, getting to the hospital that um, if you don't have a car or if you can't afford to pay for the parking when you get there, it's really tough and this is, you know, often you need quite urgent special care um, in that situation and that you know, at a surface level, we think, well, what can we do to, to improve that? Well, actually, there's quite a lot. And obviously, Let's Get Wellington moving, in my mind, is something that we have to focus on as being a way of helping people access health care, all the other parts of our city that make life good. So that holistic thinking that Karepa spoke about is so important. And I think that is where this strategy changes the way that council operates, because we don't, we, we need to break down those silos and that thinking where we say, this is our box, this is what we sit in, and we just do that. We actually think more creatively and we say we can make decisions which make this easier for people. So again, I do want to um, acknowledge councillors for your support in resourcing um, uh, council, our council to be able to deliver for Māori and as we've heard actually everyone in the city because so many Wellingtonians want us to do better for Māori and want us to do better for everybody. Um, and I want to acknowledge also Kura the other day when we were having a kōrero about this um, strategy, he also brought in the whakaro around um, a wakahaurua travelling as a flotilla and that that's something that we, we can really be thinking about and I think we already are and Karepa's um, team is working on that around working with CCOs and other organisations. We are a stronger city when we move together with all sorts of people, organisations and um, I want to thank you Kura for that whakaro because I think it is really important that we, we remember that we are one part in the role that we can play as a council is that kind of bringing it together. Um, and so I'm just going to finish off now. I'm sure there'll be something I've forgotten, but I'm lucky because I do get a right of reply, so I can <laughs> I can pick up anything that I've forgotten if I have. Um, but I do just want to acknowledge um, Kara Puketapu Dentis um, said to me, maybe it was me and um, Councillor Paul a while ago, I think he was talking about, when we talk about decolonisation and, you know, the way that we can change um, our country for the better, he shared that he likes the term re -indigenization. And so that's what I see this as, is an opportunity to re indigenize te whanganui atara. Um, and, and it helps us to think of it in a positive framework and I think we need to, we need to be in this space. This strategy is about moving forward and being positive. Uh, and um, I am going to seek some advice on this amendment. Sorry, <laughs> I've just had a note saying, can you seek some advice on the amendment? So I'll do that quickly and then I'll hand over to um, Liz, who is seconding. So I'll hand over to you first, Karepa, and I think there might be others who want to speak. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for that. Kia ora. So the strategy is um, really clear in the first point around uh, supporting and partnering with Māori in the city, and so that includes the Māori wardens. And through the action plan, you might see some collaboration kind of things come through in that. Um, but 
I don't see this as a change to the actual current strategy that we have, but more of something that we can further support through the likes of Pōneke Promise, uh, through our uh, community guardians, capable guardians that we have as well here in the city. And so I do wonder if um, Sahai or Jenny, I think, is online. Jenny's online might have um, something more to add from that. I would, I would just put out there that we are supporting Māori Wardens. So the the um, the point that says yeah that we start to support them kind of thing that that kind of would not be how I would with that. <laughs> Jenny, did you have something to add? Trying to unmute. unmute. Um, look, um, we we will and we do support them, and we're doing a piece of work um, around capable guardians of the city, and um, we very much um, will be and are including them in that discussion, and that will be a discussion in support around support, not only with a base, but with appropriate equipment. Uh, equipment and connecting into all the other capable guardians around the city. So very much so part of our work. Uh, kia ora. Um, I, I'm just reading that wording and I don't think it's, it doesn't, to me it doesn't insinuate that we're not supporting them, it's just stating that we do support them. Um, but if... Because they continue. I'm happy with that, continue to support. Um, anyway, I think we will move on. I think that's fine. Did you... Excuse me, sorry, through you, Chair. Um, I have some amended wording that also acknowledges and connects the two with the Pornicky promise. Um, would that be helpful? How about I have a look at it while um, we get Liz to speak to the um, paper, Kilda? Now. Okay. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, this is a really exciting time. I'm, I'm really excited about um, what's going on in, in the city, what's going on in this council. I loved what um, Kura said that uh, Takai Hiri is the vehicle and today Tupiki Ora is the map to make things happen. Um, what I guess um, uh, I see is a visionary council that has looked into the future. Um, we heard today with Karapa talking about how um, the, the demographic of our city is going to change hugely, um, as well as already the impacts that Māori are making on um, the econ economy with the 70 billion that they are contributing, and this is a 60% economic growth um, within the city. So um, I see these things that this council is, is putting forward as really visionary and it's been done in a meaningful way. Um, but what I really wanted to talk to you about, um, because the kumara doesn't say how sweet it is, mm -hmm. so it's really hard for you fellas to say this, but I can say this sitting at this table. Um, these two significant pieces of work that has happened would not have happened without you guys sitting around the table right now allowing it to happen, agreeing for it to happen. And then for our CEO over here and her team of management and the team that work at City Council implementing it. Um, so I really want to thank you sincerely um, for, for what you guys ha have done. And I loved what um, uh, Jill Councillor Day said on, on Friday. I loved how she named you individually. I thought that was really spectacular, actually, mm -hmm. because it didn't miss anyone out and it really made, it really valued the significance of without you guys agreeing to this happen, happening, we would not have these two significant pieces of work. We would not have Karapa and his team who are pushing these things forward. And I love the way to, um, that um, there's a lot uh, of korero around um, doing this together. And I, I, I think um, that that's significant. But talking about um, uh, Tupiki Ora right, right now, I love the strategy. Um, I'm a visionary person, so I love the way that it's all connected 
to the waka and how each part is represented, it, represented and is um, significant in, in making this uh, strategy work, like the two holes. The two holes is the, is, uh, the two world views coming together and, and working together. And I think too, um, Tariana Turia said this uh, one time, the significance of, of, a, of a waka is that um, for it to get anywhere, you need to all row together. Because if you don't all row together and in the same direction, you don't get in anywhere. So uh, I love the imagery imagery of this, um, uh, this strategy. There's a big focus on environment and I think that's uh, that's really cool in me personally, that's spot on. Um, but the goals and the outcomes in this strategy, they're strong, they're resolute and they're focused. And I, I think these goals are aspirational and they do represent a future state of the type of city that we want um, to leave to our mokopuna. And, and well, for you, Tam, it's a little way off, but, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> But for <laughs> but Mukapuna, I'm talking about Mukapuna. <laughs> but but for me, I can tell you that everything I do now, in in my in my life, is for my Mukapuna. It's for their it's for their future, and um, yeah. And I just want to thank you all. I thank you all, and I also want to just take this time too, since I, I've got the. I've got the floor. <laughs> um, I just want to take this time to thank you all sincerely um, for the way that you've all welcomed me and treated me. I really appreciate that. I really, I really do. I really appreciate that. Um, and um, I just took to all this work, and I'm looking forward to what else happens. I'm looking forward to the action plan now. Hey, kapoi, kia ora. Kia ora. Um, I've just had a look at the wording from the amendment and shared it with um, councillors um, Paul and Fitzsimons who um, were keen to see it come forward. We are going to leave it as it is and that's partly because we want to make sure that it's not just limited to the Pōneke promise, that there will be um, potentially grants committee might need to look at some stuff and you know we just want to make sure that we've got it across. I have added the word continue because I do want to acknowledge that our staff have already started um, that process is, is, is underway. Um, but now I'm going to invite Councillor Paul to speak. Kia ora. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just I'll begin by joining in um, my my massive and heartfelt thanks to um, to Mana Finua, Ngati Tua, Rangatira, uh, Te Atiawa, Taranaki, Whanui, Hoki, um, and want to extend like can't even put it into words, but extend a massive mahi to um, Te Mataho, Aronui, um, and our Māori Kaimahi here at Council, um, in particular to Karepa. Johnny, Anna, Manda, Nina, um, everybody, and everyone, the massive team that we have now, um, um, this work is incredible. And, um, and kia koe Liz, um, I just want to give a massive mahi to you, and it's been really nice having your auntie vibes around the, um, the council. <laughs> Every time I come in, she's like, oh girl, you need to eat something. I'm just like, Pah. Um, so it's really nice having you. And I also want to acknowledge um, the rangatahi that are in the room at the moment. Um, people who have come to listen to us here today um, and see the way that we do things and also um, our kaimahi as well. Um, I think it's it's a real honour to, to have you here and you make our city what it is and um, being one of you for not long, I'm going to be 25 on Sunday so I feel like I'm not a rangatahi anymore but um, but, um, but I, yeah I'm old, um, but uh, I just think it is important for us to be at this table and it's important for us to speak our minds and to manifest the future that we hope for ourselves even when we feel scared and even when we, um, when our voice shakes, um, we still have to say it and make it known, the future that we hope for ourselves and our, and our mokupuna, as um, Liz said. So um, this, this strategy, like I, when I read it and, and as it's been introduced to us along the way, is already so, so, so good and, and forward thinking and future focused, um, but 
hearing all the public participation this morning really, really just emphasise that even further because you can have words on a page um, and they can be the best words in the world, but it isn't until you see that other people that aren't at council have put so much aspirations into this, um, into this kaupapa, um, that you you really see how special how special this strategy is. It's more than a strategy; it's a kaupapa. And um, seeing that, you know, it really enforced that. It takes a village, and to see how people Māori and non Māori Tangata Tiriti, Tauiwi, Ahuki, how they how they see a reflection of their aspirations as well, I think was really inspiring to see. When we were first looking at it, um, the three things I had in my mind that were really important that I really wanted Sorry. to see um, so I've just been on. Um, is there were three things that I was looking for in this kaupapa and um, those were housing, justice and rangatahi because it's for me it's always about that economic, social, cultural, environmental, tetiriti justice um, above, above all else. And um, in terms of the housing, um, it was so inspiring to me when we signed that and Karapuki Tapu Denta said that Takahere is about ending homelessness. That was, that was so inspirational and I don't want to be negative, but when I walk through this city, it's Māori faces that are on the street. And we know that more than half of our homeless population are Māori and there is something deeply unsettling about tangata whenua being homeless on their own lands. So it was amazing for me to see Manda's mahi through Te Mahana, the, uh, the strategy to get whānau into homes. Uh, I could really see that and feel that wairua reflected throughout Tupiki Ora, um, so ngā mahi Manda. Um, and it was so awesome to hear Gabriel's mahi um, that they're doing at Tapu Teranga and looking at Papa Kainga and being able to house people. And I spent um, a lot of time at Tapu Teranga when it was still standing, and it, that to me captures the essence of that whare as well and the, uh, the kaupapa of Matua Bruce Stewart. The other um, point I wanted to, I really wanted to see was around justice and um, having gone to DCM who support our homeless communities, something that they often talk about is how um, some of the things that council do can be, uh, we can be pushing Māori into a justice system in which we are already overrepresented in. And um, I'm thinking about um, particularly around the policing, but also um, some of the ways that um, liquor bans and other other devices that council has control over can push Māori into those systems. And so I want to thank Gabriel again for bringing a constructive solution forward with the Māori wardens. And I want to acknowledge the ongoing work of the Māori wardens to, prevent, uh, to present and kaupapa Māori alternative to policing in our communities. And um, I want to thank Councillor Fitzsimons for this amendment on supporting the Māori wardens and just for your ongoing constructive approach to city safety that looks beyond just policing, because um, too many of our people are in prisons. And to acknowledge Nick's kōrero as well, talking about tangata whaikaha um, or whānau haua, um, we know that many Māori who are in prison currently have are disabled. They have a learning disability, they are deaf, um, um, brain, brain injuries, fetal alcohol syndrome, and so, you know, disability rights and disability justice is a te tiriti issue, is a Māori issue, is a council issue, is an issue for us to all look at, and so seeing their voice reflected as well is just incredible and inspiring. And, and lastly, just to talk about rangatahi, I want to really thank you, Ross, for your mahi and for believing in us as rangatahi Māori. You believed in me for I was on council, and, um, and you, you truly believe in us and you bring us here. You've brought rangatahi to the room. Like, you, you are such a rangatira in this space, and it was awesome to hear you come and talk to us. As Māori, we're a young population, um, and as rangatahi Māori in an urban environment, that's a, that's a distinct experience. Um, that's a special and unique identity, and, um, and you know, I think it, this strategy to me has a lot, makes a lot of room for those urban rangatahi, those urban Māori who are looking to find their whakapapa, looking to reconnect with their reo rangatira, who are looking to um, find who they are within a city, it's it's a really distinct and special experience and just wanted to acknowledge um, uh, Dame, Dame June Jackson and her mahi that she's done in Auckland for Urban Māori. 
and um, and also Naina for leading this mahi as a as a rangatahi Māori, as a young Māori leading this mahi is extremely inspiring to me. Anyway, that's enough from me, but I just want to say um, say that um, this yeah I just I love this co papa and will continue to support it and thank thank you all for your mahi. Uh, Councillor Wolf. Uh, Tanakoi, congratulations. And um, in the Jewish religion or the Jewish language, we say Mazel Tov. And, it, and those three words um, actually um, explain and, and um, translate really um, appropriately to, to what's gone on um, over the, the months and years proceeding to where we've got to today. Um, Takaheri and in, in Topiki Ora um, are value-based. And um, I just want to congratulate Karipa um, in particular and, and Barbara for bringing Karipa on board um, because it, uh, you've been actually a game changer in the way that, that um, you've incorporated teamwork and inclusiveness. And um, yeah, I, I just wish to say uh, tanakoi, um, Karipa. Um, I also... Um, the same three words explain how I feel about having um, Liz around the table. Um, it, it's, it's been a, a, an absolute bre breath of fresh air, and um, I think that um, what you, the wisdom um, that you've brought to, to the table and, and, and the motherly approach, as Tam referred to, um, you know, it, it's um, th there's there's something else that it, other than the the, the motherly approach the, the warmth and the wisdom is, is fantastic. I, I just want to move on just a little bit. Um, there will be people in our community that won't understand what we've achieved today, and and to them, um, I say don't be fearful, um, don't be threatened. We're actually moving forward together. And, and the approach that we've, we've taken is balanced, fair, and reasonable. And what I would urge, um, there will be detractors, I would urge them to actually read the documents because the documents are really, really well put together. And instead of um, taking things out of context, um, and our media sometimes only have 400 words to deal with, take the full context of what Takaheri and, and Topiki Ora um, actually um, are, because I think that um, there'll, there'll be a, a, a greater understanding and a, and a greater ability to move forward together if, if that takes place. Um, finally, uh, there's a lot of people to be thanked, and I, I think that um, I'm, uh, Tam and um, Jill, and Jill in particular, and Tam, thank you, Tanakoi. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you the, the words, but you know, you, you know, this is a, this is a, gr a, a great achievement. Um, but there were a lot of people to be thanked. Uh, but just at the end, um, that little um, amendment that was brought forth, and I, I really um, treasure that that has been brought forth because during the um, parliamentary occupation, um, Barbara managed to, to bring in our Maori wardens to escort the, the college kids through the, and, and it was a game changer as well. Um, the Maori wardens have mana and, um, and they handle themselves in a, in a way that is very different to perhaps policing. And, and that um, over my life, I've, I've seen the Maori wardens in all sorts of situations um, and, and I just have complete and total um, respect and regard for them. And I think that it's really p important that when we think about capital guardians that, that our um, Maori wardens are very much a part of that um, with our um, existing um, capital guardians. And it was, it was um, really lovely and, and wonderful to think that there, there is going to be that parity in the, the, in the way that they're, they're, they'll be resourced. And, and I think that um, that, again, is something that's, that's really special. So I'll just, just finish with the words that I um, started with. Uh, Tēnā koi, congratulations, and, and mazel tov. Uh, Councillor Matthews. 
I was trying to get my hand up to be the first tangata tiriti speaker, <laughs> but uh, Council Wolf pipped, pipped me at the post. Um, uh, just to, uh, really quickly, um, I first of all to extend my thanks to Mana Whenua, to uh, Te Atiawa, Taranaki Whanui, and uh, Ngāti Toa Rangatira. Um, it's uh, a pleasure to be able to, to work with you. And um, I, I guess I've, I've, what I've been describing this experience, I felt this on Friday and here, um, that I feel lucky to be here and now. Um, and, you know, I felt so privileged to be able to sign Takahira, here, and um, I feel so privileged to be able to to vote my support for Tupiki Ora. Um, and but they do say you make your own luck, and I think um, by and large our luck has been made by Councillor Jill Day, um, and you know some people, you know. Not everybody can say what a difference they make on this council. And when you leave, you will have made such a difference and um, transformational in a short period of time through your leadership and now, you know, so so well supported by, by Tam and others um, that, you know, I'm just, like, I'm proud to be here with you and um, I don't want to sort of mix the metaphors too much because we're very clearly on the on the waka metaphor but I've also been thinking about you know uh, plant based <laughs> you know that we're that actually the decisions that we've made we are now starting to see to, to grow and I talked about those decisions as planting the seeds and then Anna said uh, uh, Tera Putama was digging the hole before then so <laughs> it is like this kind of work and now the tree will grow and the actions will come out of it and um, I'm really really excited to see that and I just want to thank you um, Tam also for your corridor around um, disability and you know um, the importance and I, I thought it was so great to see Nick here today and that you know really took me back to the wonderful presentation and discussion that we had at, at AAG and to see it in the document <laughs> you know like I don't I, I, I'm sorry but that doesn't always happen and it, it was really amazing to feel that that community who I feel like I kind of bring here with me even though I'm not part of it um, you know bring their voice with me um, to see that they have been listened to and um, and actually that there was already a knowing and you know and a listening before before we even got together so that was very special so thank you everyone it's great and lucky to be here uh, Councillor Condi Kia ora, Kia ora. Um, I just wanted to start by um, thank you everyone for the work on, on Takahere and Tupiki Ora and really reflecting on the metaphor of the Waka Haurua and the Hui and um, how powerful I've been finding that to kind of shape my thinking about our relationship and one of the things that's been really key for me is thinking that you know when you've got the Hui or the paddle sometimes you steer and sometimes you paddle together and what I see as part of the wero that's actually embedded in Takahere is that sometimes we as council will need to take our hands off the tiller and so that mana whenua can steer. <laughs> it's so hard for us. Um, but that's, I think there's, there's some, the, some really, really powerful challenges embedded in those metaphors that I, I'm looking forward to um, rising to those challenges uh, in the future. Um, and, and then I want to go on a little bit of a tangent um, into a specific issue that's kind of been on my mind and kind of shows, I think, some of the journey that I've been on and, and that I think we'll start to see with more takaihere to piki ora and then the action plan. And just talk about, um, you know, the daylighting of streams. Um, and when I went on to the mural task force on Three Waters, I have to say I probably didn't even really think about the fact that there's a stream that goes along Kenton Cambridge Terrace. Like, I knew that, w that that strip of land was called the Canal Reserve but I hadn't ever really connected that in my head. And when we talked about these kind of issues in the mayoral task force, you know, we kind of said, look, the f some of these are really far horizons. These are long-term things that are gonna take time to do. And the first thing that we need to do is, is don't put any more streams in pipes. 
That's the first commitment. The second thing that we need to prioritise is that we regenerate those streams that are still open. And that's the amazing work we see happening with Kaiwharafara Stream uh, and the incredible partnership that Zealandia is, has been putting together to regenerate that stream. And the work that we're starting to see in the Othero catchment that we're funding to try and improve water quality there. And then the much longer term opportunity was this opportunity to daylight streams that we have buried. And, and I love this, the phrase about letting them breathe again um, and letting us reconnect to the Awa. And I think when we think about the key, really important streams in our city, the Kumutoto, the Waimapihi and the Waitangi, um, only the Waitangi is really still mostly under council land in public hands. The other ones mostly flow under private land now, which makes them a challenge. So that Waitangi stream is a really important opportunity for daylighting our streams. Um, and as you know, I'm sitting on the Let's Get Wellington Moving Governance Reference Group, and one of the decisions that are, is going to be coming to us soon is that the option about where the MRT route goes down. And on, in one case, it might go down Taranaki Street, and a different option is it might go down Kenton Cambridge Terrace. And one of the things that I, I keep pressing, and I kind of wanted to daylight this issue for all of you, that I've been raising this um, in GRG, is that daylighting the stream may not be compatible with the MRT route going down those streets. Um, as you, if you start to look more at some of these projects that have happened um, in Korea, they've talked about um, in Seoul where a stream was daylighted, it actually takes a lot of space to, effect, to do a good job of daylighting a stream, because that stream's like six metres down below the road level. Um, you need to kind of tear us down to the stream. Um, you don't, what you don't want is to have kind of two retaining walls and a bit of yucky water flowing down the middle. That's not restoring the mouldy of that stream. So I've been continually pushing, even though daylighting the stream is outside of the scope of Let's Get Wellington Moving, to make sure that we're considering how do these decisions ha have an impact on what might be possible in the future around um, aspirations that Mana Whenua might have for that stream. And I think just being really conscious of um, that we do not inadvertently recolonise that stream when we're making these, these decisions and kind of take a possibility that at the moment we have in front of us, we don't want to inadvertently take that possibility away. Um, and I particularly reflect on that because one of the other things we did on the mayoral task force for Three Waters is we kind of talked about the history of Three Waters and actually this council was kind of instituted to do Three Waters projects. That was some of the first infrastructure that the council provided in the city. So if you reflect on it in that way, this stream, one of the first things that this institution did was put that stream in the ground. We put it in a pipe. <laughs> and so I think it's really the, the things that, that Takai Here bring to the fore for me as, as our, in our role here as a council is that we kind of are aware of that history yeah. and that we're making our decisions today with that history in mind and that we're doing our best to re-indigenise um, places where we, we have actually, this organisation severely colonised some of those, those things that have created harm. Um, so that's something that I just kind of wanted to raise for you and that um, I think we will continue to have those conversations. Um, and that may be an area that we actually have to let go of the tiller and let mana whenua steer us about whether Taranaki Street or Kenton Cambridge Terrace is the appropriate place for us to go. Um, so thank you very much. Um, congratulations and thanks to everybody who's been working on this. Kia ora, Mia Foster. Uh, look, thanks, Chair, um, and uh, I, I won't repeat anything that everybody said because uh, there's lots of beautiful words and I agree with all of those, um, but I do want to just say thank you um, uh, to everyone who's uh, helped get us to this stage, uh, to our mana whenua partners um, and to Karipa and your team, um, and also, uh, if I can say, to, to, you, to Sarah, but particularly also to you, Jill, um, for the work that you've done, because this has been an exercise, this has been an exercise in co-creation, uh, both Tupikiora and um, Takahiri have been exercised in co-cooperation over the last 12 months or so uh, to get us to this point, so I just wanted to, to say thank you. Uh, and as I did on Friday on that beautiful occasion that we had at Pipitea Marae, um, I want to also to say thank you, Jill, to you, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm echoing Rebecca's comments there uh, for the, the huge difference that you have made in, um, in driving uh, these um, 
the relationship that we have with mana whenua and with Māori uh, and in making a huge difference uh, for the city uh, and helping us along the way. And I did just want to put something that you, I think we have come an enormous distance in the last three, uh, three years and it's been a waka that if, by and large we paddled in the same direction together. Uh, you know, we get, we get slammed for so many things, but most of the things that we do, we, 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 you know, we pick up our paddles and we are paddling in the same direction, and I, I think we should be saying that loud and clear. Um, but in the last three years, uh, we've appointed Karipa, our Tataheke, um, our Chief Māori Officer, uh, and obviously fully resourced um, a program which is, I, I don't know what the, the, the budget was before, I think it might have been a few hundred thousand dollars, but it's now three million dollars a year. Uh, that is a significant resource and that is why we have that, uh, that uh, uh, wonderful team that you've uh, gone through, everybody's names, uh, Jill. Uh, we have mana whenua sitting around our table. Um, we're looking forward to having a representative of, the, of Taranaki Whanui soon as well. Uh, we have the Māori Ward. Um, which uh, is going to be voted for later on this year. Uh, we have the work of council and our CCOs in and that bicultural journey, and, and Karen um, Fifield mentioned that um, effectively, well, for the zoo, but also on behalf of our, our CCO um, family, our CCO whānau, um, and I think you can see that. You just see that as you walk around um, in, those, in those fabulous uh, institutions that we have. You can see the bicultural journey that is happening there. Uh, and uh, and then we had, of course, the beautiful uh, beautiful um, occasion that we had um, on on Friday as we as we signed together uh, that partnership agreement. And I I think, um, Jill, as you you started off, you talked about this is about partnership and about relationships, and that's really what it is about. And this is taking that the that ethos of partnership and, and relationships another step into a strategy, which is starting to put some flesh on the bones. It's starting to move us to actions, and then we we know that we'll have an action plan um, uh, coming later on. Uh, this year. Um, and I did just want to say, uh, just one thing I'd reflect on, um, Simon, your comments about people are so quick to judge, actually they're so quick to judge anything we do. <laughs> Most of the time they don't read anything that we've actually done, they just take a few headlines and they'll, they'll slam whatever we've done. Uh, but I would encourage people to actually read what Council does and this is a great place to start to read um, uh, both Tupikiora and uh, Takahiri. And I just wanted to finish off with just a reference um, and how this fits into the strategic pillars that we have agreed that we will operate under. So sustainability, creativity and inclusivity. And I think that uh, Tupikiora speaks powerfully to these as well. Um, it certainly absolutely is a, it's a powerful um, demonstration of inclusion. It's a powerful demonstration of us working together in partnership uh, with our mana whenua and uh, with our Maori community. And I really wanted to reflect on the public participation too, and I really want to thank all the public participants for the, the enthusiasm. And I think, um, I can't remember who said that now, I think it might have been, um, uh, it might have been Tam, just um, saying that this is taking the words off a piece of, uh, off, off the paper and saying this means something, this is mana enhancing. And I think that that's really, really fantastic to hear what that does for empowering and what that does for enhancing mana and enhancing the way that people feel about themselves. I think that is so important. Uh, and I think that the, um, the, the focus on people's needs, on well-being, on housing, on work, on opportunity, on capability building that is in this document and on language and culture and identity are all really, really powerful. And I think those speak to those three pillars very, very powerfully. And sustainability, of course, we've, um, Liz, you, you mentioned that so strongly. Uh, the health of our Tawai, the health of Te Whenua, um, I think those are really, really powerful. They matter a lot, I think, to all of us, certainly matter a lot to me. And so I'm delighted that we've got to this stage and just say thank you and well done to everybody. Kia ora, Councillor Fitzsimons. Well, in that iwi mana whenua o tine rohi, um, I do want to start by acknowledging mana whenua um, and also uh, Councillor Jill Day as well. And I guess I want to reflect on the nature of your leadership, which is gracious and humble and incredibly generous, um, both with your knowledge of te ao Māori, te reo Māori, but also... Um, with your dogged commitment and your incredible way of kind of bringing people along with you. And I think um, what I really like about your approach as well is that you constantly challenge yourself. So we did, te you, you led Te Tuihu, then you were like, this isn't working fast enough. We need to do more, we need to do more. We need to find some more money. We need to build a stronger team. You're never satisfied, you're constantly restless. And I remember when, um, <laughs> which, 
I, I remember as soon as um, the legislation was proposed to be changed from Māori Ward, you immediately started taking steps. I, you rang me and I was at Indoor Netball and I had four missed calls from you. And you were like, ring me, ring me. You're like, we've got to play to Māori Ward. I was like, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I did just want to acknowledge that you are um, impatient for your people and I really respect that. Um, and Tamitha as well, I want to acknowledge you. Um, you're an incredible Māori leader. And I remember the first time I met you, and I came back to council and I'm like, Justin, I've just met this woman. She's the president of USA. She's amazing. We need to put her on the Wellington NZ board. We need to find things for this woman in the city. We need to get her contributing. And he's like, calm down, calm down. There'll be a role coming. And there was a role coming, and um, it's a very important one. And I did um, also want to acknowledge Karipa and your team. Um, it's incredible to see the difference that's happened by bringing in more people, by properly resourcing something. Um, I haven't met Johnny yet, but I've heard a lot about you, and I know your cousin Shane. Um, and, but I wanted to say that the work is so important and it's so inspiring, but what I think when I read this, what I took, really took from it is how um, it's visionary, it's inspiring, it uses metaphors, but it's also intensely practical. You can feel how it will change Wellington, and that's such a hard combination to get. Usually you get lots of visionary or lots of practical. This really feels like it's both, and it does feel like we've got a chance of making Wellington a city where well-being is really central to all the decisions that we make. And I wanted to comment also on what, what you said, um, Mayor Foster, when you talked about us all being on this together, and I think there is a tendency um, for many to look at the divisions around this table, but actually on this work we have been united yeah. consistently and strongly, um, and, and people have come on board during the process, and that's a beautiful thing, and we need to acknowledge that and encourage it and celebrate it. Um, yeah, because it's been a pretty special thing to part, be part of, and I think wherever each of us ends up, we will take this work and... Um, into our, uh, the rest of our lives, so that's pretty special. I also just wanted to talk about the Māori Wardens, and um, it was lovely to have Gabriel here, and, and I talked to Gabriel a lot during the protests about how we can better support them, and just as it looked like that support was going to be lined up, fortunately the protest ended, but I, I did, it was very keen for us to see this included here, and um, it, it, it does neatly fit in the work of the Pōniki Promise, it's perfect, like it's, it is absolutely the place for it. And, it's, and it is already happening, but officers will probably understand this, that when we sit around this table, we don't get to go and work on this every day, so we want to have our contribution and put it on the table. So it's not to say that it's not happening or, or um, anything else, but we want to be able to say that we're also helping it happen. So that, that's what this is about, and really getting um, just some firm commitment from us around the energy that already exists on this. So, um, yeah, thank you, everybody, for your work. Kia ora, Councillor Fone. Uh, tēnā koutou, um, mana whenua, um, I just want to acknowledge you today and um, from my part it is a pleasure and exciting and time and I am so looking forward to working uh, alongside you with the amazing opportunities we have for Whanganui Atara and Pōneke. Um, I am the mama as many of us around this table are, of uh, two, you know, slightly biased, amazing kōtero. Um, and I know that in their own way, they are future leaders. I have come to this table because I want them to stand firm in their future, knowing that they are in the right place and doing the right thing. And that is why I am so excited about what we're doing today. And I know how important it is for their future, for them to go forward, knowing that these agreements and partnerships have been signed. Um, I want to acknowledge right at the beginning of this triennium, um, the blessed person who brought in Meng Foon to talk about, not that because he's my namesake, but um, that, you know, uh, big fan girl also, but the leadership he showed as Mayor of Gisborne and the, what he did for the, yeah, in partnership with Iwi there and um, just bringing those stories to us and that has really inspired me along this journey to where we got to today. Um, also that as the capital city of Aotearoa, it is important that we show governance as it can be. And um, this is 
what I am so excited about this, that we are stepping forward together to show how it can be done. You know, warts and all, there are going to be moments, as, as Helmut said, um, but, you know, I think we're up for that. So, um, a mihi to Councillor Day, to Councillor Paul, to Liz Kelly, to our team here, to our CEO, to Karepa and your team, and um, all of our mana whenua partners, and I'm looking forward to our future together. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, that's what everyone I have on my list, so um, I'll go to a very, very quick write of reply. Um, I knew I would forget something off here because my paper is not very tidy. Um, but I did want to acknowledge the engagement hui that happened um, to build this strategy and um, how fantastic they were and how special it was to actually be out in the community at Pipitia, at um, Waifetu and at um, Takapuahia. Um, and also we were at, uh, I think, ASB as well, making sure I get all the ones. Um, but I also want to really acknowledge Dee for her leadership through that, and to Naina and Anna, who helped to carry this whilst the team was building, and to make sure that we continued and we kept that relationship going and kept that community, that those communities that we're engaging with, in the loop, which is really important because this is for our community, and so we need to help people understand that we we are listening and that there has been a response, and the response, like I, I feel quite honoured to have to have witnessed that because I can see the strategy has built from what was shared. So I do really want to acknowledge that. So thank you very much. Um, and I just want to acknowledge Councillor Paul um, for your leadership and for your um, support. Um, it's been a real honour to work with you for the last three years and I'm really excited to see what you do. And I do just want to encourage you to be staunch in the fact that you're still young. Um, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I got, when I got elected, own it. When I, when I was elected to council, I wasn't young. And, um, but I was, I was told that I could be a member of the young elected members. And I was just in shock. And um, uh, well, I'm not really now. I've kind of, I really have left the age group. Um, but yeah, to discover that you're counted as a young elected member until 40 sends a really strong message to our rangatahi that we need you at this table. <laughs> because um, we just see all the time the perspective that you bring, Councillor Paul, and, um, and we really appreciate it. And it comes with um, such a kaha and um, aroha that um, it, it really does inspire our, our rangatahi in the city. And we see it when people come and support you at your, your various um, activities. Um, <laughs> And I want to um, acknowledge Councillor Wolf and Mayor Foster for their comments and for encouraging our community to actually read um, this document before we get the feedback that um, sometimes we get. Uh, and just to, I also want to extend on that and to encourage our communities to learn our history. One of the things as a councillor that I feel honoured is that I've actually got to read documents and understand the things that happened in this city that have never been spoken about or recorded um, in, a, in a wide, um, a mainstream sort of way. And I hope that with the um, curriculum in schools coming in around histories, um, that we will actually start to see that come out into our communities more and that we will understand and be able to, um, to respond better to our environment. Um, and Councillor Condi, I really want to acknowledge what you said about taking our hands off the tiller. And I think that's been a real thought um, uh, process that I've had going for the last few years. I was sitting on a board um, last term and we did some training on Te or Waitangi and one of the questions that was put to us is, what are you willing to give up? to um, uplift to Te Ritiwa Waitangi. And it was, you could see everybody really thinking, you know, what are we willing to give up? Am I willing to give up my seat to make space for someone else? Am I willing to change my whole context to make it better? And so I guess from my perspective, and this is going way off into the whatever's coming next around local government reforms, but I do hope that this council is brave and that can take a pathway that might look different to what it is now. It's, a, it's about more than just our own individual parts that we play in this. Um, and want to acknowledge Mayor Foster your support um, over the last three years and to um, support and encourage um, the various kaupapa that we've agreed to. And, you know, to be um, the Mayor of a Council that's increased funding for Māori from 200,000 to 29 million, well, 200,000 a year, but then to 29 million over 10 years, that's, that's a big change. So thank you for supporting um, that. Um, and I do just want to speak to, I guess, um, the, my, my thoughts around um, the importance of mana whenua in this city. 
um, I do feel like the stars are starting to line um, in a really positive way for the city and actually for Aotearoa. There's a lot of um, controversial discussion around co-governance and people getting quite wound up about it, but we're actually doing it. You know, we are on that pathway and what we are seeing is that we just gain and our city gains. Um, I'm really proud. Um, my... Um, my hapu, um, tara, uh, Ngāti Turangi Tukua, has just um, in the last few weeks agreed a mana whakahono arohi where a community board has been disbanded to create a committee with the council, which is 50-50. So it is happening, and, and we are very much part of um, leading the way um, as a council in Te Whanganui Atara, and people do look to, to us as, um, as a guide. So I think it's good for us to realise that we've got people chasing at our tails and um, and also, you know, trying different things and um, and we need to keep. We need to keep our. Someone said to me the other day, pencils sharpened. Um, so we, we definitely need to look at that. And um, uh, Councillor Fitzsimons, I think my parents would be giggling hearing you talk about me being restless. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I think it is hard because we do spend a lot of our life trying to um, fit fit into things. You know, that's a big part of human nature is to fit, um, and it's really hard when we realise that our fitting in sometimes is not allowing other people to fit in, and that we need to always keep that in mind. You know, that we are privileged to be able to sit here and make decisions for the city, but what can we do to make sure that other people can participate in that? Um, and I want to acknowledge Councillor Foon about the, the awkwardness sometimes in the, um, you know, we won't always get it right and we don't always get it right, um, but we've got to try and we've got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I'm going to finish it there and um, it's time to vote. Gosh, that's good timing. <laughs> Me putty, and I've lost my voting thing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Can we have a division? I don't reckon we'll need it. <laughs> Feeling. She's voted, I think. I can see. Oh, did you do it? <laughs> Councillor Young, are you there? We'll give it just a few more seconds. Does anyone, can anyone text her? Because <laughs> I know she has been sitting here, so. She has been, yeah. Send her a quick text. Yeah, we've waited this long. I can talk about lunch now. We've got lunch next door um, for councillors. Um, and obviously, what's that, sorry? You've got to go and talk fluoride. Okay. Um, and then obviously we'll come back. I think we'll have half an hour come back at 1.30, seeing as we've got some kai here. Oh, kua mana. And that is unanimous. That's really exciting.
Beautiful. I think we've actually got a wire to um, to respond. You know, it's up on the screen. Um. So we'll see you back at um, half past one. <laughs> Kia ora.
Um, and now I'd like to um, welcome um, Kim to introduce the report and then we'll do, take any questions that there may be. On, so this is Trails Wellington Matairangi track proposal. So over to you, Kaakui. Thank you, Chair. Well, tēnā koutou. Um, this report asks uh, the committee here to agree to support the development uh, of a new mountain biking track on Matairangi. Uh, Trails Wellington are proposing uh, to fund the construction of the new mountain bike um, priority trail in Matairangi. And uh, Council, as you know, has consulted uh, on the original proposal back in February and received around uh, 365 or so uh, submissions. 93% of those were in support of the proposal. Uh, and over the last while, Council has, uh, officers have um, been working closely with those, uh, a number of those people who opposed the development, uh, looking at how we might be able to mitigate uh, a number of those concerns. Um, the trail, of course, <coughs> will be an intermediate um, level trail and it'll be uh, provided around about 1.5 kilometres or so of continuous descent, uh, ending up at um, the Badminton Hall in Hatai. <coughs> so, um, uh, and as you know, also the, um, the trail proposal uh, is in the Wellington Town Belt. Uh, council officers have assessed the proposal against the assessment uh, outlined in the Wellington Town Belt Management Plan and have found uh, that it's consistent with that plan. So I'll now hand over to Mathanway and Ella um, to uh, add further commentary and to respond to any sort of technical questions you might have. So thank you. I'll just make one quick point of clarification. So we did realign the end point of the trail. So it's not down by the Badminton Hall on State Highway 1. It's now in the skills area up the top to avoid that risk of cars entering onto <coughs> the road. Thank Bikes. you. Yep. Great. Uh, Councillor Young has a part um, So it's just, just um, about the slight change that the short section of track near the Hatata Saddle is retained as a shared track. So I thought one of the whole advantages of this track was the fact that it was finally separating um, cyclists from pedestrians. So I can't see why we're peddling back on that. This was about the amendment. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe my understanding is that bit of section is already shared track, so it's not part of the new trail that's being constructed, unless I've misunderstood the amendment that was being passed. Okay, hence the word retained. So, all right, that's fine. Thank you. Did you want to ask a question, oh, Councillor Pena, on that? Sorry, I just, I just wanted to make the comment that it was um, from someone who's very familiar with the area and a keen walker, so I took that up. Any other questions, Councillor Condi? Mm -hmm. Pardon me. I was just interested in if we could scroll up so we can see the final um, resolution. Oh. This one, that, uh, number 11, that there would be no new trail constructed on Matairangi. Um, and it just seemed like a very strong statement to me, so I just wanted some more information about whether that's an appropriate thing for us to decide. Absolutely. Uh, in 2005, the Matarangi Master Plan recommended some trails. Those have all been constructed now. So in our minds, the trail construction with the addition of this new trail will be complete. If you have a look at the yellow lines in attachment one, um, you can actually see that the hill is fairly full of trails. So we are very comfortable with the focus now on the improvement and um, realignment potentially to those existing trails without the need to add anything new. We did pass a similar amendment at Waimapihi Reserve when we completed the building of the Ikigai Trail. Um, and actually that's been really successful because it means that the bikers know that they've got what they've got and the environmental groups are happy with that also. Thank you. That's very helpful, thank you, Councillor Foon. Um, kia ora and thank you, and I have been asking questions about clarity around the, ex the potential accessibility trail, um, but I just also then want to know how that fits with 11 um, in, the co in the possibility that we find a trail that might be suitable for accessible okay. riders. So in terms of the trail that we're looking at currently, it's so the one that we are proposing to seal and improve and slightly widen, that is an existing trail, so that won't be a new trail, that would be one of the realignment and improvements of an existing trail. Um, in terms of a brand new large scale accessibility trail that we'd like to create, there is not room for that on Matarangi, uh, so that's where I was saying that's likely to be somewhere in the northern, yeah, the northern areas, but there are plenty of trails on Matarangi itself that can be repurposed for that use rather than having to build new. 
Um, I've got a question about the accessibility trails because I, I imagine that there's different types and stages of because you know for some people if they have been keen mountain bikers and maybe have had an accident but they want to continue to mountain bike they may still want some challenge and like kind of the same sort of feel um, is that something that we can look at because obviously a, a, a track that's sealed has a different experience and um, I know that there are ones around the country where they do have like more like the gravel kind of um, tracks. Yeah, that's why we're recommending we look at that through the open space and recreation strategy because we are not the experts. We need to go and talk to all the disability groups. We're aware there's a huge range of, um, of disabilities we need to take into account. So that absolutely will form all part of that design process. So I guess the follow-on question from that is we wouldn't just limit ourselves to one track. If there is another track around the city that could be kind of, I guess, maybe a sort of more adventurous but accessible track. In a, in a way that serves the community, we would be open to that. Yeah, absolutely. Or we might actually find one area, for example, in some of these new areas we're acquiring the retired farmland. You know, they've got four-wheel four drive farm tracks that actually could be suitable for mountain bike track, and then you might put an additional track in around there as well. So it could still be within the same area. But, yeah, it's definitely something that the team are thinking about across the board in terms of improving accessibility. They've Yeah, they've got a strong focus on it. Because uh, I imagine there are... Um, there are bikes that are, the technology is getting better all the time there are bikes that people can actually ride that um, effectively give the same experience as a mountain bike. Absolutely and actually e-bikes the other thing that we need to review sort of as an aside yeah. through the um the strategy reviews is the use of e-bikes on our trails because e-bikes really do open up a range of our trails for people with disabilities. So if the disabilities aren't that severe, mm. I've got a friend, for example, can't ride a normal bike but can ride an e-bike. So, yeah, opening up trails for that as well I think is going to be helpful. Mm. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank you. Are there any other parts I... <laughs> Did you still have a question, Councillor Young? Or are you...? No, no, I've asked my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you. actually, no, because oh. I just one, just one thing. So how binding is that that we're not going to have any more trails? Because, I, I mean, I can't imagine it is that binding at all. It's not statutory or anything. I would say that the opportunity, if you wanted to review that, would be through the Open Space Access Plan, which is going to come back to Council in about three years' time for review. Mm, OK, thanks. Well, thank you. Is that... Um that's all the parts I. All right. So um, I think Councillor Paul's going to introduce the paper. OK, Councillor Pena, over to you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and I'd just like to start by thanking you, Chair, for facilitating this process and Councillor Paul and Councillor Young. I appreciate that. Um, so, look, obviously protecting our precious environment is critical, um, but also making or making Wellington even more fun is important as well. And so I'm now happy to support this track. As you know, I had some deep concerns about it, but I, given the support for the amendments, I think this is um, looking good. So Mafanwe was an absolute star yesterday. Thank you so much for, for um, helping me. Um, obviously the mountain bike community has been incredibly active and it's a generous gift and the city I'm sure is very grateful. Um, we've had Friends of the Town Belt, Mount Victoria Residents Association, Living Streets um, getting involved and uh, again very grateful. So it's great to hear people connecting with nature, enjoying healthy lifestyles, managing pests, um, this is just a good thing for the city. But we know that there are uh, often concerns around um, separating cyclists and walkers, and I think what I've tried to do here is to um, make sure we're clear that this is, you know, that walkers still and will continue to have priority whilst making space for other users. Um, I have to say that the disability access made me feel bad because I was just like, oh, my goodness, you know, like it is a a basic human right that people should be able to have access to every building, every site, and then we're looking at a, a pathway and it's really difficult. So I'm glad there's an amendment in there to look at what it could look like um, because we shouldn't be keeping the disabled community out of our wonderful parks and gardens. Um, and look, it's really great to see the um, commitment to getting rid of the illegal tracks because that does tend to rack people up quite a lot um, and so I think that will really um, help. Obviously all the uh, 
ecological restoration work. We were told it wasn't pristine. Well, we're going to make it way better. We need to re-indigenise, I think, was the, the word used. Well, well, we're going to do that here because there's um, quite a lot of uh, low-grade uh, greenery there, so we can do a lot better. So, look, I'm I'm happy. I think um, we've got some work to do here, which I'm very keen to be involved in. I'm, I'm sure that a number of other councillors, um, and we will get the best uh, for both groups, the mountain bikers and the walkers. Kia ora. Nora and Councillor Young's going to second. Yeah, no, I'm um, delighted to second this. Um, I mean, I think probably I live oh, certainly on this side of the hill, the closest to the town belt, and I, I walk on it a lot. Um, I think it's a fantastic asset for Wellingtonians, and uh, I think it's also really good that this cycleway will be um, more usable by people who don't have terrifyingly um, scary ideas of mountain biking. I mean, a lot of our mountain bike trails are for the advanced only, and this one will be for those who are less advanced. Um, the town belt is an amazing asset, and the more people who can have access to it and use it, the better. Um, so uh, it is a space for everybody, but in particular, I'd like to say Trails Wellington have done a really great job at being responsible um, mountain bikers and, and the work they've done in building and dare I say, policing the mountain bike trails. Um, I think they're an exemplar of an organization who really live the talk, um, or walk the talk, or whatever the expression is, um, because they help build them, they, they look after them, they have a really responsible, proactive approach towards mountain biking, and they have done as much as anyone in getting rid of the guerrilla or illegal mountain bike trails that are a curse all around the town belt, um, not least because some of them aren't very safe. So I'd just like to commend Trails Wellington uh, for the work that they have done and will continue to do. And, and of course, this very generous um, gift towards the building of mountain bike trails. Um, we've come a long way on the town belt from when Mount Victoria was where the council grazed its horses, which they used to deliver the milk. Um, you'll be surprised to know I don't remember that. It was well before my time. But the town belt is now a fantastic area for recreation. And the, I'm so pleased that this is an intermediate track and uh, it will make mountain biking more approachable for everyone who wants to, which does not include me. So I have um, a great pleasure in seconding this. Thank you, Councillor Fu. Um, kia ora. This is um, really great to see this paper come. I do want to thank all the submitters. It was a really uh, painted a great picture of the challenges that we've got ahead of us here. Um, but just alongside that, I'd also like to thank Councillor Panett for bringing these um, amendments to strengthen and really bring a balance to what we're dealing with in, um, in Matarangi around the with the tracks. Um, I've had a couple of experience. Well, you know, but just the two experiences that stand out most for me are uh, one where um, I, I watched a friend uh, picking up her rangatahi from mountain biking. The joy in his face was exceptional. The relief in hers was wonderful. And, you know, you just see what a, what a wonderful, I don't like to use the word asset, but we are blessed with these places for our young people. But at the same time, I have the story of a very prominent Wellingtonian who was um, knocked out in a place ground on Mount Victoria while looking after her moko um, by a mountain biker who came hooning out of the bush. So these are, you know, really the, they demonstrate the, the contradictions of, of what we're trying to deal with here. So um, I'm really pleased to see that officers are committing to, to really understanding what we do best and that we're learning by overseas best practice. We've had someone in and um, that we continue through our partnerships with our groups to make sure that is a core principle for um, for our mountain biking kaupapa or tika um, and I will be the first if it's not adhered to to start removing more tracks <laughs> you know because I think that is fair that's the question I asked um, Patrick this morning is this the right place for a full on mountain bike park and uh to Whanganui Atara. Um, but why I am really excited about this new track is that um, I re am really keen to see the balance it will bring. That was one of the key things I got out of the submissions, that, that by enabling more young people, more beginners, um, more women, more children, that will actually tip the balance into the kaupapa that goes on amongst the, the culture of the, of the trail riders. So I'm excited about that. 
But actually, the thing that also really excited me, and so I was a bit nervous when I saw we weren't supporting the accessibility trail at this point, um, but I thank officers for recognising the opportunity there. And um, I just, in my search for understanding what, what this would look like for people with different abilities, elderly, um, we all for wellbeing as an organisation in the UK who, who work with people with disabilities. In Newtown, I'm seeing more people on uh, bikes who have special needs, like a three-wheeler bike, and this just makes me so excited for the way that we're rolling out our cycleways, but these opportunities that we can bring for well-being mm -hmm. for all of our people. And um, also, there's one where they're taking elderly for rides on bikes, and I can tell you, I have asked my children to do that for me when I am <laughs> no longer able to ride. So, um, please, yeah, can I um, make sure that we persist with the, the route that will enable more people to access these rides and the wonderful, uh, yeah, wellness that you gain from being in our, in our ngahere. So kia ora for the mahi, everyone. Kia ora. I think that's everyone on the list. Anyone else want to speak? So right of reply? Yeah, I just, sorry, I just wanted to make one comment. Um, just about the history of this place. We have still got some work to do there. So thank you, Councillor Day, for um, putting that challenge out there that it is a, I'm sorry, it is a Pākehā construct. And um, so, but but this will hopefully be a continuation and definitely as we do more planting, um, we can bring it back to its uh, its proper state. So thank you very much. Great process. Mipoti. Next vote. Mana. That's very unanimous. All right. Thank you very much to the staff. Thank you for your work. Thanks, Mafinwe. Thanks, Ali. All right, we're on to item 2.4 actions tracking. So, no, Mike and Fel, Kiti Hora, Iti Korero. Thank you. Um, maybe if we just take the report as read, and I'm hopefully happy to answer any, any questions you may have. <laughs> Yeah, I think that has been brought on. Thank you. So there's no partai. We will. Um, oh, I'm happy to move that. Who would like to second Councillor Paul? Thank you. And we'll put that to the vote. Me putzi. It's all moving so fast now, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> You thought about voting in it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not very sensitive, hey? Oh, koa mana. It's carried. And then we're now on to item 2.5, the Ford Programme. No mai anō, Kim Fell, ki te hora i te Over to you. Um, so we'll take this one as read also, but all, uh, just something to note is the um, we have... Uh, and on Thursday the 2nd of June we have the Community Housing Sustainability Paper on the detailed chip design. We may move that into, with the permission of the Chair, into August because we still have the long-term plan deliberations at the end of June, so we don't want to... We want to make sure that we're fully informed before we uh, bring this paper forward, so that's um, a consideration there. Um, yeah, thank you. Are there any questions around that? I think it makes makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'm happy to move that. Um, Councillor Matthews, would you like to second it? So, <laughs> Mayor Putsi. What was that? <laughs> what we have to do is spend the time on the important stuff and then, you know, we, we, we're, we're efficient. That's right. Councillor Young, are you... Trying to vote? <laughs> Is that not? I had voted, but it came down again. Oh. Oh, 
Ko Mana, so that's carried unanimously. And I would just like to um, finish off by thanking Democracy Services. Thank you, Alessi, for your awesome help today and the team over there. Um, thank you, Kim, and thank you to all of the um, mahi that's gone into making today run smoothly and to my colleagues for being really um, supportive and, um, yeah, great meeting. Thank you. So, ko mutu i tēnei hui, i tū mō te karakia mutunga. Unu here, unu here, unu here, kite uru tapu nui. Kia wātia, māma, te ngākau, te tēnana, te waiwa, i te ara takatū. Koe a rā e rongo, whaka airea a ke ki ronga. Kia wātia, kia wātia, aera, kua. Kia pai te ahi ahi.